welcome. So let's see. First thing is comments, uh, um, public comments. Mike, did you want to? Yeah. This is this is your floor, uh, floor here. Um, I had turned around and um, I got a dog that butt locks property. Um, mm -hmm. Just as you go up through, right on the town of Hyde Park. We're talking from May to Rowan is the property line. She owns the center of it in there, no problems, no issue. Um, I have to see Ryan Nolan. Um, I'm coming back from a doctor's, asked him if you could dump over there some dirt over there. And uh, he went over, just great. He did, went over, showed him what I wanted to do, and then he said, they can't do anything now unless they talk to the town manager. I take it you're Ron? Yeah. So as I talked to Ron, I left him a message and he texted me back, uh, probably not because it's in Johnson, you should get dirt from Johnson, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I am probably from where those boys are ditching, and I'm not asking you to bring dirt across the county for you. I just, when you're on that end of the town in there, from here to that um, second pole down through there where this area is, not that far. So I came down and he said, you know, you can turn around and ask the board if they want to do if they will or they won't. And here's the thing, and it's not a whatever. I've been on this in this town, not living here, but doing stuff for this town for 27 years. 17 in this fire department, 10 in the other. And it's not like I haven't done stuff for this town. Most of these select board members that are here know who I am. So I'm not asking for any special treatment, but I was saving you guys money for you don't have to truck it a long ways. You're doing me a favor, not push it off, just dump it in the pile and I'll take care of it. Johnson dumps there too. It's not a worry about anything run over anybody's property. It's not running out to the river. There's no brooks. There's no streams. I just thought whatever. So he said you probably want to address it to the board because he has a policy he has to follow. And that's what I'm here and ask for. I'm not asking for the world. Just when you're on that end of the town, if just on that short area, and I only need like 25, 30 loads, you know, I'll be fine. But that's why I came here and I thought I'd ask. Okay. Um, we have had problems in the past with uh, some of the fill and stuff that we have provided people we, um, that it has uh, like that Japanese knotweed in it and stuff like that. That may not be an issue to, to, to your needs, that type of thing too. So, uh, um, yeah. So the policy is that uh, we provide to our own yeah, well, there's two, two basic policies. One is the highway crew does like close disposal sites. When they're digging, they like to have close, and they usually neighbors do what Michael did, which is, hey, you're in my neighborhood. How can I get some of that free mm -hmm. material? Sure. Which does save the highway guys money. Mm -hmm. Saves the taxpayers money and all that stuff because we don't have to haul it across town or wherever they're going to throw it. Uh, in the past, we've had... Uh, free range policy, I don't even know if we tracked it. You know, it was just mm -hmm. to get rid of it wherever, which is which is fine. Probably about eight years ago, we started issuing zoning permits for site alteration for town fill. So anybody that gets a request will go to highway, and highway say talk to the zoning administrator, or Ron or whatever, and we'll go through the things you were mentioning, streams, wetlands, floodplain, uh, any of that kind of stuff from our maps and our zoning bylaw and issue a permit to that person. Give the permit to the highway guys, they have the approved location mapped, yep. and they can bring to that location. If the location changes, the landowner is supposed to come back in a minute. So that creates the record of where our material is going. It's not as a primary invasive thing, but it would help there if we end up with some issue about where did this stuff go. FEMA asked us that, yep. to relate to the Halloween storm. Mm -hmm. So, it, it puts it on the record of where our material went, should there be any issues. Johnson doesn't have zoning. I don't. I wouldn't be able to issue a permit in Johnson. We don't have a practice of bringing it outside the town to anywhere, as far as I know. I mean, all the requests I've ever received from highway or from landowners have been Hyde Park taxpayers asking for some taxpayer-funded fill. Mm -hmm. So if we're bringing it to out of town, Johnson or wherever, there's got to be something that deals with that. I don't know what the thresholds are, were, how you feel about taxpayer-funded dirt going to benefit Johnson taxpayers. I guess that's, I don't know, we haven't gone there before. So I don't I, I'm just curious about, uh, um, the thing popped up in my head was like insurance type thing if we're using our equipment out, but we loan out our, our uh, 
greater and stuff like right. that. Right. So if so. you're if you're going to come up with some kind of policy that has some rules about it, and you adopt the policy and say, oh yeah, here's how far that material can go, then that's the threshold where we say yes or no again. Is it the next town over? You know, no nothing to Belvedere, but Johnson's good. Is it thirty years of fire service gets the free dirt? <laughs> There's no policy once it leaves a town. We don't have any policy except get a permit if you're a Hyde Park disposal site. Mike, you had a question. Just across the road, Hyde Park. Yeah, I know. I know. I know where you yeah. live. So I'll just turn yeah. around. We put it on the Hyde Park side. If that's the only problem he's got. I'll just ask the guy across the road. We'll put it on it's that not, side. Don't talk across. It's, it's not. It's not a personal thing. I'm, I'm talking about yeah. a town taxpayer policy that we've always followed, and you're asking to expand that. And that's where we have. That's what this discussion's about. Okay. So it's not a. It's not a me thing. I'm just. We got to put it in the context of how we operate. Can I? Can I ask a question? Go ahead. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, up, Jess, do we have? To turn you up. Can't hear me? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there she you is. Guys are you guys there I am. Um, hi, Mike. I wish I was there to give you a big hug. Um, do we have like a list of of taxpayers that like want fill? This might be more of a Mark French question, but I'm just thinking like if there are Hyde Park taxpayers that need or want fill and we don't give them fill but we're then trucking it to another town that could potentially cause issues so do we have is that any in the policy at all ron like taxpayers well, get first dibs the thing you know, once a site is identified and they issue a zoning permit which is good for two years and then they have to get a new one so do we have any waiting Oh, there's probably four or five or six every year that are just out there for Mark to use when he needs to. They don't. There's no priority to that. It's based on where their work is. Right. Okay. So, I was just going to say based on the location of where yeah. they're working, which obviously. Yeah. 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 That, the idea is that they reduce the travel time, like Mike Michael said, is that they don't have to go. Right. To well, I'm thinking, Mike, that um, where they did dump it, my understanding was just down the road from where. Uh, they were working. Yeah, it is, absolutely. Said, when yeah. I first met the plan, he was all the way out on the end. And that's yeah. when I stopped and saw him, Ryan, and I said, hey, Ryan, what's a chance? And they were absolutely great. And like I said before, you don't have to make any special trips. Only when you're on the end. I need maybe 20 loads, you know, whenever. And I'm just backing up a building. It's, and it's all going to be covered and seated. It's not in a swamp. It's not a runoff thing. It's whatever. And I mean, it's that close. And if, if it's a Hyde Park thing, I'll get it dumped on the other side and I'll put it across the lower. I'm just thinking, wow, from here to Rowley, I mean. Suggestions? Um, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that uh, um, the people of Hyde Park should come first because of tax dollars being paid to run the equipment and stuff. But uh, um, if it was a situation where there was no nobody closer, do we put a cap on like maybe a half mile over the uh, uh, the boundary of yeah, Hyde so Park? I was thinking you do some kind of... Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what we can do to... Well, it uh, depends on how I mean, far they got to travel that way to dump it or if they can go a mile this way and they have to go two miles this way. I mean, but Exactly. And, and what I'm saying though is it would give us some guidance and uh, uh, if we put a... <clears throat> mileage or how far they could go over across the town line and, and it would yeah, give us a gu could. guideline in a sense and if it's within there you know it's well that's that's what i'm saying I mean, yeah 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 i mean you could run into the same thing with the same the thing, town line. i don't want you to get you into a slippery slope either because then i'll just say well how'd you get it a half a mile the next will be three quarters of a mile and then it's yeah. a mile <laughs> so I, I was on the slope board which she knows really does too so i've seen the yeah. slopes you got them to do yeah i just thought it'd be quicker easier and sometimes and I ran the high, did the highway park at the same time. Remember, hey, don't make any difference anyways. Sometimes it's better after not saying anything, but just give them the permission, hey, you're right next to this guy, go ahead and do it. Who's gonna say anything? They don't know where the line is. Nobody knows where the line is. Right. Yeah, that's Why don't right. you just do it instead of not worry about it? I don't want to get you into something you're writing a whole new policy either. But that I mean, what he said just said is what somebody down the road's gonna hear about in six months that's gonna say Right, right. Right. So that's I mean, better to have either way it's one of those yeah. issues I, I think better to just sort of amend the policy we have to say so and and within 
and you're right, we absolutely at random picked a half mile because, you know, that's not, it's just easy sideline sort of a thing. But you must have run Can I this. throw out an idea? Absolutely, Bob. <laughs> not a short way, but slightly longer. Okay. But maybe have a meeting with Johnson and do the opposite. Say, if you've got stuff, nobody on your side of the street wants it, but somebody in Hyde Park wants it. So you have this kind of cooperative thing I know where good, yeah. people right. won't be saying, hey, why didn't I get that fill? Right. Jeez, right. that's going over the line to Mike's, you know? I mean, it, yeah. I know it makes more work. Well, but, but it's really you know, not that hard. No, I yeah. think that's pretty I mean, easy to reach that kind of a... I mean, our, the, you know, the garage folk, they have, they have those sorts of agreements all the time for doing stuff, and we yeah. don't have written policies. You, you already have them, like mutual aid and your fire department. Yeah, exactly. Right. But you're doing the same thing right. with Whoever's there, right. if you got a spot enough, like Johnson dumps there sometimes now. But they did all their roads out there a year ago. So yeah. that's why I was asking. And yeah, I mean, well, she, I understand it. Well, well, what are you can I, can I say something? Yes, Jasmine. Uh, can we, I guess I don't, can we put it at the discretion of the town foreman? I mean, isn't that kind of Mark's job to kind of know where the cheapest and quickest way to get rid of Phil would be? And if he has this list, so can we put that in the policy that it's kind of at the discretion of what, the town crew decide based on their location of where they're working instead of putting a mileage on it. I mean, I feel like, like Rolly said, if we say, okay, we're not going to go over three quarters of a mile into Johnson, but okay, but we can go three miles in the town of Hyde Park. That doesn't make any sense to me. Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? So like if it's at the discretion of of what Mark thinks that's going to be quicker and easier and cheapest to get rid of it, then can we maybe stick that in there instead of a mileage thing? Well, it, it can form some sort of a, a conflict down the road, as Ron mentioned, that uh, uh, then the next person is going to want it, the next person is going to want it over the line type of thing. But I, and I do understand about uh, uh, the mileage thing. And uh, if we had well, whatever the permits are and where they're spaced out type of thing and or even made it known that we're going to be working in an area, uh, then that would solve the problem because I'm sure there'd be enough people who'd be interested in it if they were aware of it. Um, I was dealing with it all the time up in Elmore and, uh, um, and it, yeah, everybody wanted it. We had spots all over the town that uh, we could uh, dispose of the ditching material and stuff in there. But uh, we, I think we, it needs to be structured in a way that uh, gives everybody some guidance is what my feeling is. I think that uh, if we leave it too open-ended, then it's going to cause issues. So, so what, what you want for guidance is the, uh, is, course closest may not necessarily be the least expensive right <laughs> well, I, can I, can, I can tell you what the most expensive is to not have a disposal site yeah <laughs> so right at the easiest policy is if nobody else in Hyde Park wants it and Michael says I'll take all you got then it all would go to Michael that's the easiest policy yep. you guys are in this other world of what do you do when there might be competing interests and right. I think that's probably where chastity comes in with Mark knows all his approved sites. And sometimes if he's got to go five miles up into Garfield and Michael's offering it and the board said, in special cases, if it makes super good sense, whatever that, yeah. Yeah. whatever yeah. that is to yeah, the road exactly. board, right. then he could use Michael's and keep a record of it because I won't have a record of it on the zoning site. Because it can't right. go because because it won't be recorded in right. land records right. and where it was and all right. that other stuff. So right. there's stuff to be, we track. have to fill that gap somehow so we keep track of the stuff. That makes sense to you, Rolly? I don't know how we clear the wetlands problem, because if the wetland, if, not saying that you had read it, it's okay. But if the wetlands buffer is infringed upon, that's town taxpayer cost to clean it out. But Mark knows that. So no, he doesn't know the wetland buffer is. I, so, I know that. Hey, Mark won't know that. So, go ahead. So to help you out here, so I work for SDR. So I do what he's doing on every site. We have to have him approved. We put up the silt fence. We are responsible for what happens in there. But before we take any property off on that thing, 
the landowner says it has met all this stuff. They have to agree. If there's any impact on that area, then something they don't know. It comes back to the owner. It does not come back to you guys because you've already signed off on that. That's just a, here you go, you own it. I own this if there's a problem. You do not. Okay. I do. So we, we own the Hyde Park stuff because yeah. we're reviewing with the permit process. Yeah. So we own it. Well, maybe equally with the landowner. If it's right. The band. Get it? It's true. I've been there. But we'll be, the, we'll be there with the landowner because it was a cooperative effort. But once you cross the line at Johnson, we're not going to have that. No and it's really Mark's word and the landowner's sign off. And that's it. Something like that. Mark's, Mark's, uh, Mark's saying it works right. for him, but the landowner giving us some kind of, yeah. I, and we do that for dry hydrants now. We have a landowner permission slip already for dry hydrants where we go to landowner and say, we're doing this on your property and you can tell us to get out of there if you want to, but um, you know, you, there is some risk with this fire. You know, we're gonna be so those, that, that is a George D. Aiken fund? You don't go through them? They can't break that contract, I have one. Yeah, no, the, well, the permission slip is the template that we get on dry hydrants from bro, fire, water, we're, we're rural water, resources. Yeah, water George resources. D. Aiken fund. Yep. So anyway, that that's available already as some kind of template. Sure is. You guys have one too, correct? How are you doing? So anyway, something could be developed that's not too complicated. My my only question is how do you get to that boundary line? Who's gonna do that for those sensitive areas? You know, the floodplain, the wetland, which you don't always know where it is because those things creep uphill sometimes. <clears throat> floodplain is either there or not. You know, those are the kind of questions. There's some things that can be looked at pretty quickly, because the A and R Atlas with the state is Every town, yeah. But who's going to do that? I think it's just informal because it's not part of a permit process. But I don't know. We'd have to think about that piece. I just don't want us chasing wetland violations in Johnson and Eden and <laughs> everything else. Yes, there must be some way to check that off pretty easily. People that do it all day long can check it off pretty easily. Absolutely. But people that don't do it all day long, like the road foreman or Ryan or a landowner that just thinks it's a good idea, aren't going to get to that level of comfort of knowing where. How about if we had a, a release of some sort? I'm just throwing well, that's out. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah that, yeah. that would be the release. Right. And, and so you when you, you just back sign back. it and then start dumping. Yeah. So the release would, would take care of it. And, yeah. and use yeah. Mark's discretion? Yeah, I think. Yeah, Mark, and one of the highway guys would usually do a sniff test anyway. Sniff. You know, they'll, look out, they'll go to the site usually. Can my truck get in there? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And partly, can my truck, truck get out? out. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be a Philip Honda. You, know, you can get the, in. Yeah. The obvious guy stuff. They'll they'll be able to do that pretty quickly, and then get to the release. Yeah. So at least somebody still has to go on site and look at it. Yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. It's already been seen. Yeah. Yeah. I had Ryan there, and really went and looked at it the other night. But anyways, I wouldn't put anything in here and damage your trucks. Yeah, you ain't yeah. gotta worry about that. That's it. You know, are we gonna back down the power plant road and dump fill? <laughs> Probably not down that road. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's all the different scenarios that Mark goes through that stuff and we get the release and we know where it is. And the, only, the only place you can dump down there go in the river. Well, you do it once. <laughs> you do it once yeah. down there. Yeah. Then, uh, then they won't trip or tell you, there you go. <laughs> okay. So. So I think, I think it took an interesting path, but we got to yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'll write something and send it to him, saying that you're not liable for anything. And I don't know when we're going to be over there, don't but, worry about it, it. but you're not worried. Just Mark. when when it's... Just when, give it when, to Mark, and I'll put a stun up right there, same way I told Ryan, and you just dump it. You don't have to go there. All you do is just dump it and drive out. That's it. I'll take care of all the rest. That's it. Sounds all right to me. Thank you, gentlemen, ladies. Wonderful. I'm glad we're Thank able you. to work it out yeah. and come to a. Thank you very conclusion. much. We appreciate it. Yeah. Take care, Mike. Bye, guys. Enjoy the rest Thank of the you evening. Sleep. She's like, yeah. <laughs> it takes a while to figure you get to mute. Unmute. Did I miss him? Bye, Mike. <laughs> I have to unmute. It takes forever. <laughs> Uh, just back up one second. There's two things that were off the agenda that we need to add, which is town orders. Yep. <clears throat> and uh, a, a newer topic on licenses for uses of town highway right away. I can give, go over that stuff later. Okay. So it wasn't on the agenda? No. Town orders were just biffed on that. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one was licenses uh, for 
agreements for use uh, in public highways. That's a, that's a new one that I started with right now. That I to okay. Oh, thank you. So zoning. Zoning. Yes. The bylaws. And anybody online that have comments or anything about the zoning bylaws? I don't hear any comments. Yeah, I don't know if anybody online. <coughs> That's the <a> handful <laughs> of people up there that may be in zoning or not. Anybody online? You got uh, comments? Well, do we, need, do we need a motion to ex what we got somebody? Um, I'm just looking to review them before I ask any questions. Sorry. No. Who's who's talking? Do we know. This is Janine Chalou and John Chalou. We live up on Webster Road. Webster Road, yeah. Janine Chalou. Janine, Janine, you said it's like, do you need time to study them? Do you have, because we're getting ready to, we've been look, working with them for some time, so I'm just. You just said you needed some time to look at them, and I guess I'm asking, how much time are you asking? I'm sorry. You said you needed some time to look at them, and I guess I'm asking, how much time were you asking? I'm sorry. The I had them pulled up, and then I couldn't. They disappeared. I'm sorry. Whoops. <laughs> I had some feedback there. Too many mics open. Janine, how much time do you need? <clears throat> how much time do you need? No, I, I go ahead. I'll, I'll just listen for now, and I'll ask any questions if they come up. I'm sorry. We're about ready to vote on it, Janine. Go on, move, and we can second, and then we can have a conversation. That's yes. Right. Okay. So I'll move. We accept them. Need a second. Second. Then we can have a conversation. Okay. And okay. then we'll have a discussion. I, I'll say one thing that the, the biggest change I saw was fixing the Green River overlay map, right. which mm -hmm. for the last 15 or odd years was a flat map, which didn't allow any adjustment from the tougher zoning down in the low spots. Now we have a three level map. We have set it into three zones. It freed up a lot of space to have just regular zoning permit. I mean, a regular building permit. And then still the higher level with, you know, no big white houses up on the top of Diggins shining at the reservoir. But then there's some other intermediate zones where, um, you know, the rules aren't as strict. You can cut a few more trees and maybe you can paint your house white, you know. Yeah. Um, more option. Yeah, it's, it, 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 it's, it sort of goes both ways. It, it, the folks from Green River Board were happy with that new map. Good. And some of the people who wanted no zoning there were happy with that new map. So that's always a hard thing to pull together. Sure. And we did do that. Uh, it took all winter, and really the savior was um, uh, Alex Jones, who's a newer planner at um, county planning, and he, find, he learned the LIDAR software to take the state data that was there, but put it into our overlay. You know? Yeah, so you can actually see We've it. We've been all yeah. winter trying to get, you know, um, get that put together at the last, literally at the last meeting, right. that map showed up. And, it, the, and the problem we were having with this zoning area before was, until you guys sign off on this, we were not in compliance. Our verbiage over here 
and our map did not agree. So for all these years, a lawyer could have walked in here and said, I can build anything I want up on that hill. Because there was just a couple little phrases in there that were wrong. So that's all cleaned up now to match the new one. Perfect. Good. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Bob, for your work yeah. on that. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, yeah. And Ron, <laughs> Ron thank you, Ron. A lot. You know, <laughs> county helped us. Um, there were folks from Friends of Green River helped, you know, and, and, and Alex was a big help. You know, mm -hmm. getting that map done. So yeah, yeah. Nice to see the young guys. They know the software. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 The new, as it gets fancier and fancier. Okay. Any further questions? Wait in case somebody can't find their uh, mute button. Wait. Okay. Okay. So good. All right. So there's been a motion and second. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Anybody abstaining? The ayes have it. Good. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Again, thank you for your hard work. Yeah, we're on to the next. <laughs> the next <laughs> one's bigger. <laughs> it's going to take a year, though. Yeah. <laughs> See you later, Ron. Yeah. Okay. Change my time thing here. Hi, Scott. How are you? I'm well. And yourself? Good. 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 Um, you're here for contract signing. I think Cody's on the agenda. Yeah, we're gonna kind of combine them with the sheriff stuff. Yeah. Uh, we're not ready for the sheriff stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay. So the uh, next one is what you the. Let's do Scott quickly. I think. Sure. You should be pretty quick. Yeah. yeah not guess. asking for more than the voters approved. Oh. That's, that's the only question you guys always ask. <laughs> I was going to say that's right. That's that's first. Right. Okay, we're good. <laughs> what do you want us to sign, Scott? <laughs> well, I need a new car. Okay. <laughs> that's in the fine print. Right? Yeah. That, that shouldn't be a problem for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, Why? Since, my apologies. Since this was approved, um, that town meeting shouldn't be an issue. I have two con uh, copies. There's one I signed and can keep, and then there's one I just and they signed it. Sense, right? And so once I have all five towns that have signed it, I'll get you a copy of that. I believe the auditors prefer it that way. Yeah. Sure. So I think it's the one on the top. The, I think Eden has signed that, and the other one will be for your copies. Okay. Thank you, Phil. You just missed the zoning vote, Matt. That's all. I missed the what? The zoning amendment, Matt. I would have had to have seen. He's my uncle. Oh, Mike. Oh, no, no. The zoning amendments. No, no. Oh, no. Just, oh, sorry. Just the, just the, that was the only vote. We got to yes with him, too, so it's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So we uh, we don't need a vote to approve it. Yeah. We do. Okay. Yeah. Should, uh, okay. Vote to approve the contract. Or Did anybody need to see it, or did oh, you see it three. online? The contract? Well, yeah, I couldn't hear who was speaking. I kind of got like a little bit of every other. Can you just give me a quick summary? Who speaks? Scott? Scott. Who was Scott? Scott who? Scott. Hi, uh, Scott Griswold here from Newport Ambulance. Oh, hi, Scott. <laughs> okay. Okay. Perfect. Oh, on the ambulance. Ah. Got it. Okay. Ah, Sorry, I was hearing every other word and I wasn't really sure what you were discussing. Got it. I'm with you now. Matt, Matt's here too now, so. Okay. So I'm just here to get the contract signed that was, um, the funding was approved at town meeting. Perfect. Does anybody need to see it? I don't. Okay. Okay, so uh, I need a motion to accept it. So I'll move we accept the contract. Second. Okay, uh, any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining? Check check the fine print for his new car. It is right here. Okay. <laughs> um, we are putting a new roof on the building. We do have the cash to do that, and their COVID contracts are ending June 30th. Unless they do extend the home booth.
use or something, but I don't think they'll be it. testing anymore. It sounds like mm -hmm. they just be it. done at home. Yeah, okay. yeah. It sounds like it. So there's that. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and this is ours, you said. Yeah. That's yours. And I'll get a copy until I get this signed by everyone, and we'll get you a copy of that. Sure. Okay. We'll sign this. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Have a good evening. Yeah, you yeah. as well. Okay. And that goes to you. Okay. And then the sheriff's he one. His copy to run with, right? He's got yeah. his copy. I signed it. Not just nice sign, just just for our records. That's fine. Gotcha. That ain't it. Yeah, that's zoning. Um, was it one for the sheriff's department? Yep, that's right. Uh, there. Uh, right here. Yep. Oh yeah, got a star on it. And then we'll do our uh, okay. Uh, Katie's here. Same thing. The amount that was approved. By yep. yep. Do I, Ron? Do I need to come in and sign anything tomorrow? Do you guys need uh, me to sign those? No, uh, not yet. We don't need five. We can, we can get away with uh, okay. four. Yep. Do we need another? Okay. The yep, same, okay. Same thing. <clears throat> okay. 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 Uh, yeah. I move we accept the contract from the sheriff. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining? No, he's have it. Um, 10, 23rd? 24th. And there's another one underneath here somewhere. Pass those down. Just to be clear, there's two contracts for the sheriff. One is for patrol duties, and the other one is for the 911 communications yeah. service. Mm -hmm. Tackle next. Katie Buckley's on the line for the ARPA. ARPA. Welcome, Katie. Hello. <laughs> Hold on, let me get my camera. We're honored to have you. Oh, thank you. I'm honored to be here. <laughs> we, uh, at least, I had been anticipating uh, the, our conversations and uh, uh, excited to hear what uh, you have to uh, uh, make for. Suggestions, I guess. Would it be suggestions yeah. or just ideas that uh, what other can... people are doing? Yeah. Sure. Well, um, I can say that Hyde Park is ahead of the pack in terms of what other towns are doing. Um, I can say that a lot of towns have been holding off on um, doing anything whatsoever because they wanted to get that April 30th reporting under their belts before they spent any money or made any decisions. Um, what most towns have been spending money on thus far, if they have spent at all, were those immediate needs um, in response to COVID, uh, you know, building ventilation, um, lots of land record digitization projects happening, um, upgrades to IT and hybrid meeting equipment, which you guys have great hybrid meeting equipment. I can see and hear you all very clearly. So that's um, such a nice, uh, treat for me to participate in a meeting where I can see and hear everybody because uh, there's a mixed bag on that. Um, so what you've done in terms of your identification of local projects and the list that you've created is a great start. Um, and Ron had shared that with me. And there are items on the list. You also have a great grants list on your website that I saw that you put together. Um, so it looks like you're identifying funding sources that can be leveraged in addition 
for these projects that could be potentially funded with ARPA, and then your ARPA will serve as grant match versus funding the project wholesale. Mm -hmm. So I'm, how would you like to proceed? I, I have your list in front of me and I've kind of coded some of it with some of the funding sources that could be potential. Okay, let's go down through the list and just, yeah, you know, the ones you highlighted and uh, mm -hmm. what, what uh, qualifies. If you say the project name, um, I will then talk about potential funding sources and Ron, you might have already identified them. Yeah, the list that's online for anybody that's listening, it's on our homepage. There's uh, red stripes on projects that are completed or funded otherwise. The rest of them are sort of in that pending idea pool, uh, always being looked at, always being tweaked. Um, some projects go away and they're deleted. Other ones are increased in dollar value. None of those have really hard numbers. So they're really budget numbers on that list. So as you go through the list, I'd be more concerned about the, the concept and the topic of the project and the look at the dollars as more of a placeholder number, not, a, not anywhere near a real invoice type number. Mm -hmm. So we'll go down through the list. Um, the first one that comes up is the Guyon Valley Hall, and there's some renovations to it, foundation, windows, ceiling, uh, fire escape, and uh, fire escape two, insulation. So... so who owns that building, if you don't mind me asking? The town, the question. the town does. The town does. Okay, so the one above it is an adjacent property that you're not acquiring and you already own the Valley Hall there. Correct. Okay. Um, um, it is currently used by the town for um, a community space? Yes. It's, okay. Uh, um, it's, yeah, they have... Uh, meetings, fundraisers, and stuff like that there currently to, uh, okay. try to raise money to, to finish the renovations on it. And they've been struggling with with that, but uh, they have had some luck. Okay. And, and then the grants, there's grants as well. Grants. Yeah. Yeah. And it, is it a historic building by any chance? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, so I created a, a, like a funding matrix, which Ron, I can share with you for historic municipally owned buildings. It has all the sources that are applicable to historic buildings. I'm happy to share that. Um, in addition, there is a piece of legislation that I am not quite sure where it stands in the state house. It was um, it was passed by the house and it was passed by the Senate. I don't know uh, if it has the governor's signature yet. It was H518, um, and it's uh, some of the state's ARPA money that will be used for municipal buildings, and the the one of the priorities of the funding is um, energy improvements, specifically fuel switching to um, away from fossil fuels to renewable energy sources. Um, and so I think the projects for that are, are up to $500,000. That's on my list as well. That's a good funding source for um, municipally owned buildings that are there there's some aspect of public access to them so there's uh they'll have access to high speed internet at some point i think by 2024 if not now um and that there's some it could be even a small space in a town office if it were a town office project um but this this um hall looks like it would be a good candidate for that so keep an eye on that legislation so something like heat pumps would probably yep. Yeah, that's exactly what it's taught. That's exactly the priority of that funding. Mm -hmm. about that, right? yeah. Yeah. Over there. Yeah. 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 So, so good. Um, and the next one is uh, uh, the HVAC uh, ventilation for the town, uh, for the town highway garage. You don't have a great source for that. Highway garages are tough. There's not a lot of, in fact, I don't really know of any funding other than local ARPA funding. Um, and taxpayer money for, for town highway garages. Okay. Okay. That's the, yes, just to be clear, the other grants is what you're referring to. So when, when the highway guys look at adding a bay, they're either talking about special appropriation from taxpayers mm -hmm. or ARPA, yeah. pretty much only. 
The only thing that's come up in the past are things that help with water quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Storm water controls, salt water, salt shed buildings, those kind of things. Yeah. Those don't come up very much. They kind of go in a flurry and then they just. Yeah. And they're very specific around solving a, a specific um, problem. Okay. And if, you know, if your town highway garage were part of a fire and rescue facility as well, you could potentially try and get a FEMA grant um, for the for the fire and rescue portion of the building. But if it's just a, a town garage, then obviously that funding source wouldn't be applicable. Okay. Should we look at the, at the three ventilating things together? That's how Ron's trying to get a bid for them. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's so. There's three lines. Just Katie, we're just talking about the three lines in that list are related for each. Yep. Yeah. Yep. There's uh, the library. Yep. And then the town office. Mm hmm. Um, and I mean, if you were doing that, um, H518 funding, depending um, upon the cost of each of those pieces. Um, I don't know if there's a fuel switching component to the library or the town office, or is it just ventilation? I believe just looking at just ventilation right now. Right now it's ventilation. The library has been upgraded with heat pumps. Okay. The town garage is uh, heated passively by holes in the wall. <laughs> and cooled the same way. That's, that's not uncommon. <laughs> Depending on the weather outside. Mm -hmm. I was going to say you could maybe bu uh, bundle a pro those projects together as a single application for multiple site. Maybe if if there was the food for thought. Food for thought. Uh, we need to have that funding um, come across in the program structure come out so that you'd have a better sense of what would be eligible or not. Um, but you could potentially do that. The league is going to be involved in in standing up the drafting the program language, which is great. So we can participate in that and make sure it's best for towns. Just a, another thought that just came into my head, Katie, was uh, how about um, if if we needed like a drilled well or something? Um, there's uh, funding through A&R, but it's more for community water and septic, not just a single one site on site septic or well. Even if mm -hmm. it were three, three different uh, spots. Can you, can you district yeah. and do like a, a more of a community? Is it water or wastewater? She said community. The places you're thinking would be community. Yeah. Those yeah. If that's not a personal source. Yeah, it would be like for a fire department or uh, the town. You can get multiple buildings on one system. Um, wow. Or no. You get the distance there and here. There. Yeah. Yeah, the distance there. Yeah, maybe two of them on one. Mm, might be a stretch. If you could get a cluster, you could do we a We like the stretch. We, we stretch and stretch and stretch. <laughs> yeah. um, you could ask about the Agency of Natural Resources funding. They've gotten a ton of ARPA funding for uh, water and wastewater projects. I don't know if that would qualify, but guess what? You can't win if you don't play, so it's worth asking. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Um, what was the next one? Uh, the fire district uh, water system upgrade um, designed 13,000 uh repair costs unknown pressure tank generator for the fire department i think that's just straight local arpa money yeah and the next one was the library but the library is part of the ventilation mm -hmm. uh, and there was um recently arpa funding for libraries through the state department of libraries i don't know if that um, funding round closed. It might have closed earlier in May, but I don't know if it's still open. It might be worth asking or if they'll ha even have another round of funding. All the funding hasn't been committed. Yeah. I can I can share that source, Ron, after I can send you an email with this in it if you'd like. I might. Great, thanks. Okay. The other one, Katie, is um, the North Hyde Park uh, revitalization. Um, 
Uh, we're uh, trying to spruce up uh, North Hyde mm -hmm. Park, and um, uh, let's see, there's uh, the old state garage for parking, uh, small park. Um, it has environmental issues. Yeah. And uh, uh, what educational development and uh, de decentralized sewer. Do we know what has environmental issues around, or that was just just a note needing assessment? Needs assessment. So there's brownfield funding that you could. I'm going to guess you probably have already chased a little bit of that for a for the assessment work. Yep. Your audio went down. Uh, uh, I don't know if it was something that yeah, we're going to try to crank it up here a little bit. Sorry. It's all right. Okay. The next areas are um, recreation, um, regional amenities, uh, improve uh, like our rail trail, uh, yep. parking area, tourism, yep. economic development. Um, there's a, the Vorak grants. Do you know about those? That's the, um, oh gosh, let's see if I can get this acronym out of my mouth. Um, the Vermont Outdoor Recreation, uh, I forget what the C is, but it was a commission that was formed and there are um, grants through the Department of Forest Parks and Rec okay. for um, outdoor rec. I will send the Vorek grants if they still have them. I think they do. That was a big initiative of the governor's. So libraries, Vorek. Um, you don't need, you know about Brownfield funding, right? Yeah. Yeah. Great. And the next one is still under recreation, uh, ball fields. Um, don't, have, don't have a source for that one. Um, although maybe, maybe, maybe there are community facilities grants. Um, let me look into that one. Okay. I know that there is uh, grant funding for, like if you had a, a local fair, and I know for recreational facilities, I don't know what their definition of recreational facilities is, but I will look and if it's a viable one, I will send it. Okay. And stormwater. Um, have you looked at the state's stormwater? Yes. Funding? Yeah. Is it eligible for that or no? Yeah, some of the most of the anything to do with stormwater is going to be in that either 50 50 or 80 20, where ARPA could pick up the cash. It match. could be the match. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's yep. it's probably the best way to do it because there is there's there's more than a little bit of stormwater money out there now. Definitely. Yeah. Stormwater, water, and wastewater money is pretty plentiful right now. For our fire station, um, how about like uh, electric cutter, thermal imaging camera, or cones or signs? Would it help with that? Uh, it could be a FEMA grant. I don't. Is it a town fire department yes. or is it a volunteer yeah. nonprofit? This one here is a town. Yeah. Um, those those grants are a little challenging. The applications but it might be worth looking at it to see if they could even, if not just for this equipment, if they have other equipment needs and do a larger application so it's a little bit more competitive. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, a fire truck? Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> Did somebody say that? Yeah, we, we have a firefighter grant with FEMA pending for uh, yeah. replacing all the radios. Right now. Okay, great. Yep. That's not right. going to come out till September. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's once a year. <laughs> and they're hard applications to write. If yeah. they're if they're still the same application, they are not the easiest. Yeah, no, they're not. And the next one, town office, public records, digital scanner for immediate, uh, immediate online access to town records. Yeah, those are, I think all local ARPA. There was um Late, the, last year, there was coronavirus, other coronavirus CRF funding, it was called. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, 
that towns were able to apply for that funding to do some of that digitizing, cover some of those costs, but all of that funding has expired. So now you just have to kind of use your local ARPA. Okay. So pretty much like anything with a town office, it would be an issue or like uh, it says co-file. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all scanning and digitizing stuff. Yeah, those are expensive projects, but once you're done, you're done, right? Then you just have to maintain it every year. Yeah. Okay, that moved us right down the list pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> and even even a digital phone system uh, you know, to connect all the departments. And you've completed you got that. that done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, let's see. And again, mm -hmm. it's probably the same thing about moving uh, yep. uh, more town services to online. Yep. Uh, ad. Okay. Now, um, Old County Housing 365 plan. Uh, but anyways, um, what are other towns uh, asking for? Uh, is there like a average of, of, of them are asking for a certain type of thing or Maybe something we haven't talked about that uh, they. A lot of I'm seeing a lot of what's on your list, yeah. is a lot of what I'm seeing. Um, I had sent to Ron a list of um, there's it, it falls into two buckets really, um, and the first is improvements to municipal operations. So a lot of what is on your list is on everybody's list. Digitizing land records is a biggie, a biggie. Um, IT upgrades, any anything having to do with IT and cybersecurity, um, just because that's such a growing threat to municipalities, and often um, it is a an expensive upgrade that uh, is hard to uh, make the investment. And um, so we're seeing towns doing IT upgrades, both purchasing hardware, software, servers, and security. Again, hybrid meeting equipment, um, improvements to ventilation in town offices, improvements to community spaces that really served uh, the public well during COVID, um, a lot of what you have here. So your, uh, what is that, Kihan Valley Hall is a, is a good representative project of what we're seeing in many towns throughout Vermont, that they're either improving their town halls or they're improving um, their community gathering places, uh, pavilions being built, uh, outdoor rec in terms of uh, improving local trails or expanding local trails just because they got so much use during COVID and trying to um, either connect pieces of trail and make a more comprehensive trail system. Um, it's a great economic development driver as well, lots of people driven to outside. We saw how many people came here and used our outdoor rec resources during COVID. Um, lots of improvements to libraries because they really um, provided a lot of services to residents. Some, you know, offered all different, there's, you know, Wi-Fi access from the outside. There, some offered even pickup and delivery of, of food shelf items at the library. Libraries really served multiple needs besides just you know, basic library stuff during um, the pandemic. So your list looks a lot like other lists that I do see. Um, lots of questions about broadband. There are towns that are wanting to contribute to their um, local communications union district, uh, you know, in anticipation of broadband build out. Um, that's another popular item that um, towns are considering. Um, a lot of what a lot of what you see here, other towns that have uh, the opportunity and um, the funding are considering ways to support local housing development. Um, you know, towns where they have maybe old dilapidated properties that they can acquire and get development ready for housing to be built. Um, <clears throat> a couple of communities like Westford and Jericho have um, pieces of land. They're either developing a water and wastewater system with the idea that housing will follow on or acquiring pieces of land to get ready uh, to then have middle-income housing developed on it. 
just a just a thought that I've had that uh, um, I like to do a lot of traveling and mm -hmm. uh, RVing and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, some of the towns down south they <laughs> offer uh, campsites for um, mm -hmm. for RVs and stuff, and, it, and it's close to the their village. So when they want to go to eat for yeah. you know or whatever the library or whatever it's close by and they can come in and camp at a either mm -hmm. very low cost or uh, or free i've i've seen some that do it free just to help raise the um their economic uh yep you know viability and uh um would that cover anything like that if we had a piece of property we wanted to convert uh yep it's the final rule was passed for ARPA funding in uh, January. And it essentially, I'm, I'm sure that Hyde Park took its entire ARPA award as using the standard allowance. So you can claim it as lost revenue and you can use it on the provision of government services, which pretty much is anything. <laughs> I mean, it, it really blew the, the guard guardrails of the ARPA funding wide open in terms of what you can and can't spend funding on. It's um, there are very few things you can't spend it on. But basically, if if it's illegal to spend your taxpayer money on it, it's illegal to spend your ARPA money on it. If you um, if it's a real or perceived conflict of interest, um, then you shouldn't spend your ARPA money on it. And if it's something that you wouldn't feel comfortable talking to your voters about, then don't spend your ARPA money on it. But other than that, it's pretty wide open. So if it's if if it can be justified as an economic driver um, for the community. Then, yeah, if you can if you can help your local economy, that really helps everybody when that happens. Awesome. Uh, anybody else got any questions for Katie? We really appreciate your time being able to. Uh, oh, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> appreciate that, and your wealth of information, and uh, and that's what we need a lot of the time. So uh, we appreciate it. So. And and I'm here as a resource for the long haul. So if you have questions or ideas or want to kick ideas around or anything like that, that's what I'm here for. So Great. very, very much appreciated. Great. So, okay. That's Thank it. you. Thank you. I'm going to go feed my family. <laughs> okay. Have a good night. Thanks for your time and thanks for your hard work. Have a good evening. You Kate. too. Take care. Your time that this money has to be spent. It's twenty twenty three, right? 20, 24. 24 December is the obligation, or you have to make a decision. You don't have to have spent it, but you need. Then to you have two more years okay. to spend it. Right. Okay. But you can spend it now. I'm just saying. By yeah. twenty four, you have to provide U.S. Treasury with your list, <laughs> final list. That was good. So with us as a board, have we have we started? I mean, obviously, we've been talking about this float net. It's, at what point do we start saying? Well, some of the stuff, uh, like some of the computer software upgrades and things like that, we've been picking at yeah. a little bit. No major projects. The only obligation that you've done that hasn't been spent is 32000 for North High Park Fire District for a water study, and that hasn't been spent yet. Um, beyond that, uh, you'll see invoicing, uh, no, I'm just trying to think of an example, uh, putting the permits selling permits online to match the land records online. Mm -hmm. That was $1,400 or something for the new software package, ARPA. So it's not, it's not getting anywhere close to 740,000 yet. So you have a long way to go. Yeah, but I think it's, it's based whatever the, the three ventilations and the public records are the, sort of the money that's if you will, committed. Yeah, those are those yeah. are sort of in process, I guess. Yeah. Right. We have the engineering done for HVAC. We just need a bid on construction. So so taking my select board hat off and now we're jumping behind the recreation one, at, at what point would that committee be allowed to approach the board for some of the potential money to funds? Anytime. Anytime. It's, yeah. Okay. I, I think when the board decided to post it online. Last August, I think we've had it posted. Right. The list has grown very slowly. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. your line item, I just increased 
Yeah, I saw that. Back to the original. The original. Yeah. I started yeah. looking at some yeah. catalog yeah. for like a swing set chair at two hundred dollars. Yeah. I'm like, there's no way twenty thousand is gonna get them. I think our original was like four, we were forty five or something like that. <laughs> right. we right. saw what, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, those are yeah. always until there's money obligated, for sure, and we're gonna have lock it down. Uh, a lot of those projects can't move forward. Sure. Right. Would, would but you, I mean, I, w I would think the sooner you come in and say, here's what we want, right. I, I would sense, you know, let, let's do it. We know it's, you know, why wait two years to make a decision about something like that? Let's right. get it done. Correct. Because obviously with our insurance, we had to remove all of our playground equipment. So now we've got yeah. 60 or 70 kids up there on a school night playing ball with no playground equipment. So Yeah. So I, why don't you come into the next select board meeting? I'll get, I'll get the board on board. Yeah. Board on board. Get that board on board, yeah. That's right. So, um, this is just a thought that um, <clears throat> have you got? Have you got an idea of what? Okay, we have a full, yeah. full list, yeah. full catalog. Thing. Okay, full catalog. <laughs> like, like, what do we want? Yeah, this basketball court right now is, was all donated equipment twenty years ago, yeah. so it's all gone, falling apart. It was on a telephone pole, so we want to put a small basketball court so the kids can play. Um, this, like the playground wood chips, a little small swing set, and a small slide. Yeah. And then yeah. we have a fence that is in the dire need of attention. Yeah, remember that fence up there around that area and stuff like that. The ball fields were originally built with land and water conservation funds, mm -hmm. which also took an easement on that land. <laughs> so you have to be careful about that. There's other four, two or three different agencies right now that will give you money for that, but they might give you 50%. So the ARPA money could backfill a 50% grant. Perfect. For example, but we yeah. gotta start with that list and yeah. you know, split it out to what's eligible in these other programs. No reason to hit ARPA for 100%. Right, agreed. Yeah, there's some, right. Yeah. What was but the- what There was, might be a reason for expediency. Yeah. What's the projection on uh, when we might need that gravel where the- It's 50 current, years. Huh? It's still 50 years. 50 years? To get to the southern end is 50. I don't know yeah. when we start to infringe on like the parking lot. Maybe that's less. Yeah. Yeah. So every time he goes into that, he, it's amazing. You know, when mm -hmm. he just chews that whole side away, and you're like, oh, now we're closer. Right. <laughs> the next big, the next big chunk he told me was going to get really close to the access road, which yeah. creates the initial problem: yeah. is access. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you do sort of need it. It's yeah. helpful if you can get there, isn't it? For sure. No, but yeah. at some point I wanted to have the rec committee and the highway crew think about that in more detail. Okay. Maybe with like granular engineering. The select board wants to have some soil borings done mm -hmm. to see yeah. really what's left. Mm -hmm. And that might be a good three party conversation just to get some of the guessing well, out of the way. Some of the guesswork that's being done now yeah. out of the way. Yeah. Well, with this, with the, here we're here, a little, if I may, a little random. Uh, with uh, you know the Menage property and talking about getting the soil borings, get that one out. Can we just go ahead and do that, and then we'll know we'll know what ours is clearly, but then also what is on the Menage property. You know, I mean, just is there some? Have we got a, have we got a land agreement? Yet? We haven't got a purchase sale agreement. No, no, yet, so we can. Yeah, so so I think. I don't think we invest much until we have that purchase and sale. But but there has been some movement. There has been. Okay. Well, yeah, but it, but I think it's we want to know what it is. Yeah. Before, <laughs> and if we go ahead and get it, and then he sells it to somebody else, we can sell them. We can sell them our information. <laughs> Say, okay, we got it. Here it is. Because I know well, it's I guess not we could ask Howard if it's all right to do that, but. Uh, um, yeah. How how expensive is that, Ron? Not too bad. It's not too bad that we just had some done on. I can look at the water we, for the three, the three culvert replacements had soil borings done. I can look at that bill and tell you exactly. Three grand. Three sites. Yeah, but what is it like three grand probably? I don't. I can't. I don't want to yeah. tell you. But a lot of it has to do with number of borings, and that's sort of a granular engineering yeah, estimate. Of that field. That's so they get twenty-five acres. Yeah, so they can get the good information. It's not that much. It goes pretty quick. Between three yeah. and five. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Three and five grand. So, so I, I think we should go ahead and get that done, and then, and then we know. I mean, since there's no rush on that property, and if they're. 
It would give we, us all a better idea of where we could go with it. Yeah, of, of what that, that property does, yeah. really does have. I mean, yeah. we're going we're going with a big assumption that it's good gravel. Who knows what? I think we're twenty five years before we can picture gravel, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's a it's a long way out there, which I think is probably why it's not a hot piece of property to sell. Most people aren't interested in purchasing something that you can't do something for a long time. Right. <clears throat> you know, so it's, um, I don't think it's like it's going to be sold out from underneath us and find out what it is and then we, and, and then we know what it is. The, the costs are related to the boring plan. The boring plan and number of holes is related to what the engineers need to give them good yeah. we have yeah. Yeah. So if you're looking for a quality Pretty much analysis of how much years are there, right. if you take I out 20, to make sure we we're doing it before we're 12,000 a year right now. Personally. Yeah, so, so to know with, first of all, what we already own for sure, yeah, what, what we've that. got and what the quality so update is. update the existing. Yeah, update the existing and then do, then see what Howard's property is like. Yeah, you can so, If we find out it's a rock quarry, well, you know, I don't know, it's valuable, valuable too. Yeah. Yeah. Money and raw. I was, I was going to say that might make it more valuable. Who knows what they did? Money and raw. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all, all those natural resources are. Look at the raw okay. they're using out here. Whoa. So, do you need to? Can you just go ahead and do that? Or well, do I, think, that? I think it's more of if the. If the estimate is within reason of what you're thinking, five, which would you say, five to ten or three, three to five? Probably. Three to five. I think you get, get an estimate on that. And we can then we'll bring it back. Okay. I, you know, personally, I, I, again, I, I just don't want to spend town money on something we don't own or potentially we know. You said there's movement, but I, I don't know. Don't know right. what movement is. <laughs> Definitely. I, I, I guess I'm just sort of, <laughs> I'd like to really know what we're buying. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah. Oh, okay, we'll get some. You're saying maybe get getting it. a sample before we buy it. Is that what you're yeah. Because yeah. if yeah, yeah, could we go back to the voters and say, hey guys, this isn't what we thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, maybe it's not a bad idea. So. Yeah, yeah. The voters yeah. Have only approve borrowing. You yeah. still have to make a decision on right. buying. Right. Right. So, yeah. and you know, we've said, and and we said it came. You know, it was we didn't have all the right. information that we would like to have. Per so. Personally, I don't think you can lose money on the land for the town or investments. I mean, I, I don't either. Community, either, community but, gardens, community, whatever you want to be. There's a right. lot of there's a lot of right. opportunity. Yeah. Right. But. Yeah. But just so I mean, make everybody feel better to say, okay, here's here's what it is, because by the time anybody can do much with this, so I, by the time you go, go through our grandchildren, by issues. the time you go through permitting, I don't know that you'll ever really get a gravel pit there. It's, yeah. it's literally yeah. putting a hole in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, there's right. well setbacks, there's house setbacks, there's land setbacks. We strip the dumps all off it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's a value there. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that was farmland. Yeah. Is, is Mark on um, the highway summer work? Um, let's see. He was supposed to be. He called me. He told me he'd be on. Brian? Oi! Here he is. Hey. How's it going? Welcome. Yeah. Summer work plan. We're just finishing up, actually, spring work plan. We switched to summer work plan. <laughs> so you don't hear it. There's not a lot on. We got the roads probably almost three quarters away, shaped and chlorided by now. Yep. Okay, close to three quarters. Then we got to move on to Cooper Hill shortly. Yep. Um, a suggestion from you, Mark, uh, when we get phone calls from people and they're concerned. You want them to just send them to you, or do you want us to yep, take send them to the shop number, and yep. I'll talk to them. Okay. So I was thinking about uh, having some sort of a idea of what's going on, but uh, I know that changes so frequently. Yep. Um, it could be weather. It could be a whole bunch of different reasons. So I guess probably lately has been weather. Yeah, definitely. So, and then but any uh, complaints or whatever, yeah, complaints or whatever, inquiries on anything, they should go to the shop number. We can figure it out, make both sides happy. 
but I don't want you being inundated either so you don't get anything done but uh, we got to have some way of uh, uh, doing that so if they go to the answer machine then you can pick a time call them back, call them back. yeah right Oh dear. Any further questions on that or? Okay. Uh, refer to Mark. Mark, what's the number at the shop? 888-4625. Thank you. Put that my phone so I can reference to it if I get a call. And the next thing on the list is uh, uh, the hiring of uh, Blaine Deloyle. Just to circle back, it's something we talked about last month too with Center Center Road, and that that's completed. So maybe we ought to just make sure that we put it on the one that. It looks like they came back and paved that. How do you feel about that, Mark, how that center road came out? I haven't been up to look at it. Well, you can feel the transitions, but it's better than what it was. Yeah. And what was what was the reason for the uh, the failure in the pavement in there? It just wasn't enough, whatever they used for bonding and material? Well, they thought that it's where the paver took off and it got a cold start. Yeah, okay. okay. And you're satisfied and with of course, the, of course, those trucks last year were getting tangled up with that Route 15 project from Wolcott. So they were getting tied up. So sometimes the paver had to sit because of that. Yeah. So now that... And, oh, go ahead. Another thing just from last meeting. Uh, well, two things. One trailer update is they got parts on back order. He's thinking two weeks, what he told me. He said he's got four trailers waiting to arrive, but he was thinking to be out another two weeks. Okay, if it ain't next if it ain't in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna buy one somewhere. All right. This guy's this guy has pushed us off now for a what, a month and a half? Well, I think it's like anything. It's with the auto dealers, it's with well, international right. trucks, it's everything, it's, everybody's the same. But start looking somewhere else because we're gonna have to have one of them trailers. Summer's here. And GPS, I got the quote on that, and that's one ninety-seven a month. Here's the, here's the paper Lost your sound for some reason. Thank God. I thought we had a third one out there. Ron. Oh, uh, just handing yeah. out the quote. <laughs> I thought I had another copy later. That's okay. Those are identical, those two? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah. So what are we getting to this? Um, Mark, so, are you so many you? units are on there. I think there's five. Yeah. Heavy equipment and seven trucks. Should be right in the middle there. Five and seven and zero. Eleven. Five, yeah. Seven vehicle tracking subscription and five uh, powered asset tracking subscriptions and seven engine uh, connect data subscriptions. So those, all that data feeds into a dashboard that Mark will be able to access on his computer and see the data that's being collected, see if it's useful. If we're unlucky enough to have a storm event, then we'll really be able to see it, how it would help on the grant side. The day-to-day -day yeah. stuff is what Mark needs to evaluate and make a re recommendation to you all whether we should continue with that service or just get rid of it. Yeah. So I think that's how we're approaching it anyway, so short, relatively short term. You have to have it long enough so that you get to the event that we're trying to test, which is a grant eligible project, which we might have to make one up if we get a bad weekend. We can still run that. <laughs> Hopefully it's not that bad. So anyway, that's the... So are we voting on this to accept I it think the that? board wanted to see a final quote. We had early estimates from last year, got deferred. We talked about it. You asked for a quote to start this. The Verizon needs that sign. 
sent back to them so they can work with Mark to set up the trucks and start the dashboard. It's 197 for all the equipment. Yeah, 12. Is it 12? Which is 2364 dollars a year. Is that 197 all in, or are we going to get, like on my cell phone bill, I get a bazillion tax and surcharge and all that other garbage? I know we're exempt, but sometimes with communications, you're not. So I'm just wondering yeah. if that's yeah. really the full cost. Yeah, Verizon said that the quote that we get is the total cost. That's when we met with them two months ago now, three months ago. We asked them that question. They said that's the cost. Yeah. So... Can I ask Mark a question? <laughs> Mark, do you, yes. do you think it's worth trying it for a while to see if it's worth it? I think the way times are right now, I think we're crazy to add another bill on anything, myself. That's last what I last was meeting, we were trying to figure out how to pay our uniform. <laughs> now, right. We're going to add more. Like that's, <laughs> Now we're going to get a water bill, so that's something else we're getting. Like, we're just getting too many fees, I feel. we got to. Stop and regroup. Yeah, I don't. The, the past conversations until tonight was that it wasn't about the cost. It was about whether or not you could run your department more efficiently with information, and secondarily, whether or not having good records would help us in a grant reimbursement. I know for a fact that the grant record reimbursements, if we have to go through what we did in the Halloween, uh, yeah, right would benefit greatly, not only in save time for data collection, but in the grant reimbursement, which is, you know, 92% of those costs. So every time you miss an hour of a truck at $100, you're missing $92. So I don't, you can look at it as a cost, but I look at it as more of an investment from my own perspective. If you don't think it's going to help you and your management and you don't support it, that's that I'm, I'm not going to comment on that because we're trying to give you a tool that helps you make better decisions. If you're not going to use it, then we don't, we shouldn't spend the money on it. Obviously. I just see a benefit. Well, as far as the management part, you know, I'm small enough. So I know where everybody is. I know what they're doing. It's not like, you know, if we had 30 employees, maybe it's different, but I don't, th I, don't I think know where Mike not. Griggs is. I know where Ryan is. And I know where Jason is. I don't think you're, you're not hearing what I'm saying. If you're making a management decision on keeping your people busy, that's one thing. I'm looking at a management decision based on the cost of that equipment, how much time is spent, where that equipment is, how much it moves, how much it sits. That is really hard to do without information. I sound a little like Dave Gagne a little bit. Um, <coughs> so, but it really comes down to not a sizing thing, which obviously a lot of towns aren't doing this for that reason, I think. They just, they're just too small. They don't see the benefit of it. And I think there is a benefit for large companies and big corporations and big municipalities to do this. So we are kind of stuck in the middle. I, I just know that from that one angle of, you know, let's say 50% of the cost being reserved for grant costs and 50% of the cost being for your, your use, um, I know that money's gonna come back during those grant events. Yeah. What you do with the, $1,200 a year and you don't want to use it because you don't see the benefit of it. I, that's a 50, 50 deal there. I mean, I don't, that you're not going to have to use it. I can use it, <laughs> but like I said, you're, 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 you're not hearing what I'm saying. Which is, <coughs> well, anyway, so I'm, I'm coming at it from a different angle than Mark's coming at. He's coming from right. the practical. Nobody does this. It's a small town. It's a waste of money and blah 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 like that that's fine that's a good argument from that angle but and, and the cost of everything else that's what he's kind of saying i think right. you know yeah, yeah but, i mean but, it, right well but, that's what we're trying to do but what what department does this come out of too right i mean if i think mark started getting squeezed we're talking about his uniforms everything else i totally get both sides of this yeah we're trying to i mean we're trying to look at all expenses and the only way that you can look at trucks is with good data and mark does not have daily truck data for operations he knows where his trucks are and he knows how to use his trucks to get a good job done as quickly as he can so i don't i don't really see he's probably not going to take a lot of benefit from that from half that cost yeah what, so we're saying half from mark and half half you can take out of grants i know i mean we're still rolling around with fema with the halloween thing of 
they were almost three years ago. <laughs> yeah. You know, and and if we had had all this information, it would it would cover the twenty three hundred dollars of ten times over, with the amount of time that that the office and, and the highway folks have spent on trying to keep answering all the FEMA questions. So, you know, so, it, and again, it's it sort of, in some ways, the information is more valuable that way than the than the day-to-day -day stuff. I think that's again, what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah. Mark's not gonna get up in the morning and look at yesterday's truck data on a GPS dashboard. That's just not gonna happen. However, if I ask Mark to quantify all the grants and aid, which is an annual grant program, and he doesn't have to do anything but run this button. report off the software, all that money that the town crew does through force account is either 80 or 90% reimbursable to the taxpayers. And the, the information that you collect goes right back to the taxpayer. And that would be less work for Mark on those because I'll, I would have access on those grant projects. Yeah. That's not, that, he's that's not going to care. Is. He won't have to care about it during the day to do daily reports yeah. on his equipment. I'll get the daily reports as they're happening. Right. By, by site, too, which is another benefit of the, you know, I don't have to worry about where the trucks are because I'll get the location map of the time it was spent at those sites doing the work. Yeah. Would it? What do you think they're rolling? Well, I'm, I'm thinking, <laughs> should we try this for a year or should we put this off for a year just because of the squeeze, squeeze that everybody's going through now? I mean, well, I, I don't think there's a cost to the department directly. You can, the FEMA money that's coming back is going to be close to over, probably close to $300,000. That will be up to you how to use that. Right. Now, so that's it's not like we're asking for the budget like Matt was saying it's not it doesn't have to be like, a budget right. item this is money that was spent two years ago that we're finally getting back okay um, if you all wanted to use um, every year we have five or six thousand in the um, um, engineering money for highway yeah we could probably use ARPA money is it, is are we already oh, sorry no, ARPA money is Ar yeah, Chastity? I know the money, the FEMA money is coming, but God, you guys, we were struggling to buy the fuel last week and we spent $40,000 on fuel and we're going to have to do that again and the price is going to be even more. I mean, I feel like we're going to be using that FEMA money for fuel to keep our trucks running and keep our roads plowed. Like, right? I mean, I don't think we should think about spending that money quite yet when we're already digging into our budget. Uh, I don't know. I feel like we're already overspent yeah. aren't we we're talking about where we're going to find money and no, the now fee, we're talking about spending. no you're right no you're right there's you know the in and out kind of thing going on so we have like 150,000 for fema that will come back by june 30. 60 you you all overspent last meeting right right so you'll still have 90,000 um left over with with another 100 about 120 coming back on the rest of the FEMA. I, I can't. Uh, so anyway, I, this is it, it's, it's totally a 50 for 50. Yeah, yeah, this is this is obviously it's being difficult, but for and as the weather just seems to get more and more bizarre. Again, just having gone through and you know and and seeing what it took. Never mind the road crew after it was done, but with a major event, the amount of time and and as you know that what FEMA wants. To have something that were easy that was easy to print out to give to them would would again it would be worth it. Do I believe we'll have another horrible event in a year? I think it's quite possible. Just looking at the way things are going, and and again, part of it comes out of grant money. It can come out of it, we we don't have to ding Mark's budget to you know to 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 deal with this. Um, it it's. Uh, and it's funny, sometimes you can roll around and $2,500 is more difficult than, you know, $150,000. Um, but I, th I think I'm, I'm ending up deciding, which is not where I was before, that I think it makes sense to try it for a year. You know, and in a year we'll have, you, you'll know 
Um, and again, and all it takes is one significant event uh, to, to know, and of course part of when you have events is you, you've got to hit a certain financial number, and this would, you'd know real fast if you were hitting a financial number if you had this data. Is there any towns locally around that do it? I think we asked that question of Verizon. I don't think there was, there was I think he came up with two or three in northern Vermont that yeah, were doing it. The bigger, the bigger city, maybe. Like Newport or something? It was, I don't, I don't know if Mark remembers, but it wasn't that many, no. No, it's not that many they're doing it. It's Montpelier and Burlington. Yeah. Are the ones that has it. They're doing it because they've got big numbers of trucks they're trying to keep track of. But back to, uh, like, there's still so much data that's got to be wrote down because this GPS isn't going to tell you half the information you need for FEMA. Could you, what's on the truck? It don't tell you what's on the truck. So you got to, all the time spent as far as like a FEMA event, besides just the GPS coordinates, is pretty much already going to be documented. It has to still be documented. And if I took a picture with my cell phone or whatever, I can get the GPS coordinates off that as well. Yeah. Well, the thing you're missing, the thing you're missing with that is that the reports are going to show the location and time, and time is where you make your grant reimbursement. So they always want to know the hours exactly, generally, of where that truck was and how long they were there, and that would be automatically summarized and digitized and thrown to an Excel file that you could use it. Right now, we have paper records and digital images sometimes that take a extra effort to be able to put into the answer, if you will, that FEMA's asking. So if I say... But I'm still going to have to have the paper record, though. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to do the daily worksheet because UPS is not going to tell us what we had on the truck or if we were hauling in or hauling out. As long as it's out there. Yeah, they're... they're, not, they're I've been through that. They're not going to ask what you're hauling. They're going to well, ask... No, but we took a couple... Six in the FEMA there, event, that's where all the money's at. Yeah, they're gonna, they're going to still ask you for the number of loads that were delivered to right. the site, but they're not they're, the time of that truck is what they're really after. Right, on the site, on that site, responding to that site. Been there, done that. Um, you know, we had to we had to adjust some of the daily reports because there was extra hours for trucks. You know, in one day, you can't have a truck running more than twenty four hours. So you know, we had to go through that kind of stuff and get that fixed, which. It didn't take a long time, but each when you try to do it seven times over, because we had seven FEMA projects, you know that that time adds up too, and I think you lose some accuracy there. So I don't, I see the benefits from a very uh, direct grants management right. need. I, the day to day stuff, I'm not challenging you there, Mark. I'm just I, I know that you know where you need trucks and where you want to send them on a day to day. Um, I don't I, I think they're two different ways to yeah. to use that. There's a sense of, of stress and uh, big brother, you know, on the, on the employees too. So I understand probably, yeah. I mean, that people aren't talking about that, but I can guarantee Ryan and Jason don't want to be washed anymore than they already are. I mean, I, I don't like it. You know, that's one of the things at work I hate. But. Well, it keeps them, yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I think a lot of that was addressed when they, when they know that the, everybody doesn't have access to the information. That it's marketing and for grant stuff, Ron. The rest of us don't have access to the information. Because right, that was definitely a concern, and you know, I I I would have the same thing. Rolly, what do you? I mean, you've been and done the FEMA stuff. What do you think? Well, I'm right in the middle. Yeah, I know. I, I know. I'm right in the middle it, it, because I know car, what Ron's man. saying. And I know what Mark's saying. Yeah. And 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 what you're saying is there's going to be more of this events before we get well yeah. when you get two inches of rain 15 20 minutes it just can't take it all right and it, it may be true this like this is just following what susan said it may be true both ways mark may find some benefit to it that he's not anticipating but when and i may find that the amount of work that we have to do to massage the data isn't worth it on the grant side yeah. so can we go why, six months why don't we go yeah, a year I'm like gonna ask that. like um wait Susan said, why don't we try it a year? Or six well, months. the contract is for a, a year. The other, the other thing yeah. that we could do, like Mark could decide not to look at it 
the, the stuff can be running. Right? Right. You can yes. decide not to. And I'll say, we have a problem. We, we're going to have a bad storm. Make sure you have that stuff running for the weekend because we may need that data. How long, how long the rest of the time, he's not even looking at it. How long does the data hold? I think you have to. I think it. What did the, uh, I remember all this. This is months ago now, though. Yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> listening guy. Yeah, I don't know if I can answer that. I remember talking about how long they held the data and how long you But you could print it data. out every month or something. Yeah, you can always access it and get the reports out. And I'm, I don't plan on report anything unless there's a grant project related to it. So that's why I was saying if Mark's not doing a grant related project and he's not interested in it, it just goes dormant. But it's always there when we need it. That might be exactly what happens, actually. <laughs> so there's a again. I'm not saying there's a whole other sense of responsibility for the guys that are, you know, get they get in an accident and they it turns out that they were going three miles an hour faster than they were supposed to. It's their CDLs and stuff like that too. So I, I, I mean, I think it's more pros and there is cons myself. That's the way I'm feeling right now with it. And if it's and if it can pay for itself, then it's not really a financial thing. It's because it could you know, for those grants and stuff like that you get my answer to your thing, yeah. Going three miles an hour faster. But also if the other person's at fault and they're fighting it that they're yeah. not in fault it's the truck driver it could yeah, be a benefit to it could, benefit to, time. It could yeah. be a benefit to them yeah. too yeah. for their license yeah, yeah. agreed it's, okay uh, just to see what happens i'll move that we do it for a year can i second yeah, yeah. Second. <laughs> just, okay let's just see what happens all in favor uh chassis did you hear what we we're doing. Yeah, Susan just moved to try it for a year. Yes. Yeah. And I second it. Okay. All okay. in favor? Well, signif you just just we'll just ask because then it won't be a, okay. All all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstaining? Opposed. I oppose. Sorry. I'm indifferent right now. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Not a well, we can't. We can't. Not we gotta, let's decide and get this either yeah. on, do it, or don't do it. Okay. I'll try it for a year. Yeah. But me too. Okay. But I, I, I want to be open with Mark, and if it's not yep. working for Mark, I, I want to get up. Yeah, just turn it off, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, if we see that it's a big benefit, sure. But if we, I mean, again, I'm going to go back and I agree with Mark. We're spending money. If it's not coming out of his budget, if it's coming yep. from FEMA, if it's... But we're locked into it for a year once we sign right. a contract. Uh, I mean, or we're going to pay for it. Yeah, that's probably... We, we, yeah. I mean, we're locked in. Yeah, like you said, this, this month our fuel costs are $10,000 more. I mean, but at the same and time... paying for water. Yeah, so it's, I don't want to be paying a bunch of town taxpayers money unless we're going to... Yeah, see maybe there's a benefit. See a benefit. Right. Okay. Right. And this we'll we'll know at the end of it. And and again, I think if it proves absolutely nothing, there's probably a way to get out of the contract to say this is not working, it's a mistake. Is there initial install cost? That's all part of that. It's all in there. It's all in there. Yeah. Do you want me to sign that or uh, I think it's a digital signature, so if you have a digital I'll have to click on a button. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's done. Um, let's see. We'll deal with. Do we do a bit blade of oil? We got a. Oh yeah. <laughs> I remember we started there when we got into Mark and we got in the highway and other things. Yeah. So all this paperwork, we've kind of um, Roland made some phone calls and uh, um, kind of got three board members, myself being one of them. It was okay to. To do it, uh, to get him started, so we can get our sand put up. And uh, uh, who else did you? Was it Chastity you called? Yeah, me too. You, her too. Yep. So yeah. And I called the holes. So. Called all you guys. Does it still need an official? Yeah. So the um, two two things: the seasonal employees that we hire are hired either for the season. Or we and we terminate them, and then they 
we may or may not hire him again for the next summer season or winter season. So that's what Reno does for winter. Uh, Mark is seeing a need for Blaine, who's CDL, truck driver only type thing, and kind of like a more flexible schedule, because he doesn't want to work full time, uh, to keep Blaine on as a sort of a permanent on-call person for truck driving, whether it's winter or yeah, season. So he would be added to the sort of the part-time roster, on-call basis, which is new for him. So, so that letter, if you voted to approve the letter higher for Blaine, at $19, I think that's, 19 an hour. Yeah, $19 an hour. Yeah. Then Mark will use them as he needs them. First project is sand, and we won't have to worry about terminating and hiring. And I'll stuff. make a motion, I think. Oh, yeah. can I, I have a question, just quickly, because I was wondering why, I think you just explained it, Ron, but I just want you to clarify it, why Blaine is different than than da my dad when we hire him every summer for mowing like we don't have to approve that mark just brings him on each summer for mowing is and but this is different because blaine we're hiring him specific for some for a duty is that why we're voting on it i guess that. i was confused as to why we don't because do, we don't do that with that or, or with dale every year right yeah we do so so oh we do so Dale, com Dale comes well, yeah, in. Probably, I probably couldn't, so that's probably why I don't remember. <laughs> no, he comes in and signs a letter every every season, and then we have him for four or five weeks, and then that's then that's it. Oh, okay. So, Got it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay, and the difference here is that this is, doesn't have that seasonal condition. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So a motion's been made. You made the motion, Ron? Uh, oh, I'll you, you, motion. Yeah. I'll second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining? The ayes have it. Do I need to sign this down here then? Uh, no, I'll sign that. That's, 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 that's for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, at the bottom it said sub supervisor or something there. But, um, That'll be Mark. Yeah. And something also pertaining to the uh, highway. Um, <clears throat> when uh, we started talking uh, to Ron and Ron discussing down the road uh, his retirement and stuff, I called uh, um, Karen Sackpole and started uh, uh, had some questions I needed to have uh, some legal advice for. Her. And one thing that came up um, uh, was um, in the conversation was the uh, uh, the use of town equipment outside of uh, uh, work hours and uh, the one thing that came up was um, lawsuits and other things that have uh, uh, happened in other towns and um, the one thing was the truck at Mark drives home uh, once it's not during work hours it can be considered a, li a liability to the town if something was to happen and if something happened, then the town could get sued as well as uh, if there's any fault on Mark's part or whatever. His, you know, it's our insurance. It's uh, uh, that liability uh, for, for anything that happens after hours. Um, and it could be looked upon as uh, by the citizens uh, uh, that maybe it shouldn't happen. But anyways, that came out in the conversation. Um, and I'll, at, towards the end uh, tonight, we'll talk about uh, what she said about uh, uh, possibly uh, hiring for Ron's replacement at some point when that comes up. There's some other information there uh, that I'll discuss a little bit later, but this is under the garage and highway stuff, so I thought I'd bring it up now. And I wanted to get people's feedback. And for me, it's kind of, it's like a benefit for Mark. Uh, to have the truck to go home with and stuff like that, but uh, um, it was well, Mark, also Mark's using the truck to go to and from any calls he might get. I mean, right? I mean, that's what he's using the truck for. It's not like he's using it to go get a six pack of beer. So it's I mean, in theory, all the liability would be you know, town work, anyways, right? Um, well, going just going home and coming coming to uh, if there was an accident uh, that could cause some. Uh, some issue based on what uh, Karen was discussing with me. I did it all out. Uh, this is uh, all my notes I took on a napkin from uh, uh, it's a claim to the town, um, elevated risk, um, um, 
it wasn't used for, it was not being used for actual business use um, but but what about when again because mark if there's a bad storm mark gets up in the middle of the night and goes out and he's checking and karen karen mentioned that that is a normal practice of of towns to uh to say if he came to the and got the truck and then went out and checked it and there was a potential of uh, uh needing to go back out again it was okay to, to take it home and then go back out uh, uh again that type of thing if there's um, a potential for it and but, Roland, but, but yeah. mark doesn't know when he's going to get a phone call <laughs> well, yeah, just like the rest of the crew, they have to uh, come here, get the equipment, and then go out uh, and do it. But uh, I don't know if... Uh, my, my feel is Mark, Mark, has, Mark has, a, has a leadership role. We trust that. I, I'm not going to vote against him taking the truck home. That's my, that's my take. Yeah. It's good. Other towns do it. Town of Eden does it. Ricky drives his truck home. Well, it's a, it's again, it's, it's, it's not as though... You, position. Yeah, well, you don't know when... Mark doesn't know when he's going to get a call and when something right. might happen and he needs to go out. And, it, and from the time he gets the call, he's considered on our time or our direction. And if you texted him on the way in and he answered the text, it could be your responsibility because you texted him. That's, that's, that's how that works, too. So, I mean, it's all. Yeah, if you want to. Right. Technically, if he, gets called out, if he gets called out for an emergency, his hours would start then. He'd, he would be covered as an employee from the town. Yeah. Right, I would think. Mark, do you use the truck for any yeah, other purpose? That? I said, do you use the truck for any other purpose than work or nope. going back and forth to work? Nope. Is this an issue? Why was this brought up? It what was, was brought up in my conversation with Karen Stackpole. But why? Because of other towns. Was there, an issue? was there a complaint or an issue? It wasn't a complaint. It was uh, an issue that came up uh, with other towns and uh, safeguarding, I guess, is just what I'd call it. I'm not saying to or no uh, or anything. I'm just saying if it's something we should be concerned about because our attorney uh, brought it to my attention. He brought it to your attention you didn't question it because you were concerned i'm just curious this just seems like out of the blue kind of conversation it was, and i feel like i see every town truck in the whole lamoille county and all of vermont they and the, even the state guys taking their trucks home so i'm just wondering why it's all of a sudden an issue it was some of the stuff that's been happening in other towns is what the conversation was about initially uh, Well, I don't, I don't think it's an issue, so I don't, I don't, I'm not concerned. There's no vote needed, nothing, right? What's that? There's no vote on this, right? No, I just brought no, it to people's yeah, attention. Just bring it up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. On to the next, in my opinion. Unless you want, you want to voice anything? Nothing else as far as from Karen. I'll just talk about the rest of it later after we get done. So we did blame. That's done. And the more uh, we did the ambulance and the sheriffs, uh, and then the road name. Benji Collas is online. Hi, Benji. Good evening, everybody. How are we doing? Good. Is a road name? Uh, yes, <clears throat> for um, the the Green River Woods Association up on Dig up on Diggins Road. We're off of Diggins Road, it's the, it's the access road that comes off of Diggins and then goes back to to all the uh, the properties back there. And I've been I've been approved from the DRB to um, uh, or at least initially to to build uh, up up there off of Diggins Road and Lot One. <clears throat> so this I, I I assume this is part of the uh, the requirement as well for that. So the, yeah, the process that will follow is the uh, Green River Woods Association, Homeowners Association, 
submitted a letter recommending Green River Woods Drive as part of the 911 numbering ordinance. Okay. So the way that those road names, which are private and sometimes just laying out there, never developed, get developed, this has been around for 20 years, I think, without an official name, uh, serves eight lots. And lot one, which is the Claus property, needs a 911 address to complete that <laughs> permitting process. So, so we need a road a, name. I'll make a motion to complete the name process. <laughs> and the select board makes that decision. Right. Yes. I'll, I'll second that. <laughs> All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Abstain? Okay, you always have it. Thank you. You're welcome, Ben. Here. Well, I was waiting for that. Okay, other business, um, the stipend for the town fire warden. So this was a suggestion of mine just following Roe, um, Ryan's presentation the other day. I, I guess I hadn't realized that what happens day to day or year round for the fire warden actually does require similar expenses to what we do for other you know, town health officer, the ACOs, who are other people that run around town in their personal vehicles serving complaints, uh, investigations, whatever, inspections, and his state stipend of $30 a year, uh, partly fueled quotes by the gas prices. So it seems like there should be some appreciation yeah. cash-wise for that service that he provides. And that's 24-7. You know, seven, you know, uh, calls. Just I smell smoke. To can I have a burn, a Kindle permit, to whatever. So I'm not going to speak for him because he did a good job the other day. But I tried to quantify that a little bit. I actually called him after the meeting. I said, Ryan, what, what, did, what are the other stipends? Is it really everybody just gets thirty bucks? And Johnson and Eden, I think, are uh, 20, 250 a year. So I texted him back said, that's probably before it's five dollar a gallon gas too. So that, that's the information I have. Yeah. There there are above above stipends for the fire warden. It's not a lot per year, but it's something that is really more of appreciation, not a yeah. not a reimbursement of cost by no sense. You know. So just, if you're interested in that, we'd make a motion instead of today. You know, every July award the fire warden X dollars in appreciation for services done the prior year. The prior year. You want to right. front it, we do it. We do the right. look back. All right. <coughs> That's as far as I got. I'd move that. You have an amount or how do you want to? Uh, the 250 was something that was done years ago by those other towns. So I was like 300 if I had to say a number. Okay. Would be fine. Is that what your motion is? Yep. yep. And you're seconding it? I'll second. <laughs> okay. 300. 300. Yeah. yeah. We'll we'll wait for Matt to probably, come back out. Probably pay it technically on June 30th for the. <laughs> no, we'll wait. We, we have. We July have, 1st? We have recognition money in July. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you make it half every six months? I mean, you know, 300, 150. He's on for five years. Yeah. Every six months. So. We can ask him. Right. Yeah, an somebody option. like, yeah. All right, we'll give him an option and yeah. see what he said. So there's a motion on the floor for uh, <coughs> Fire Warden. How much? $300 a year. Maybe it's doing two, two payments for him, 150 150 every six months or something like that, too. I mean. Okay, Chastity? Well, I. Yeah, I have to abstain, right? <laughs> okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Anybody opposed? Abstaining? Yeah, I'll abstain. Okay. Got it. Okay. What'd she say? She, she abstained. abstained. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, what the hell? <laughs> okay. Duh. See, now she can't demand half the money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
made that one uh, add on for licenses. Yep. Public trails. That's my was my only add. And minutes, if you want to defer those, if you those. I don't think I included them in your packet. Yeah, we'll have to defer those. But the licensing. So we have one, one, two, three. For some reason, these come in bunches, but. Project on Maury Road, single family house, sort of, I don't know if you know Maury Road, you go in and it takes a bend towards the rail trail. On the inside curve is the house proposal. The village won't run or doesn't have any plans to run water and sewer lines to that proposed house, four, 500 feet down the road. So the landowner has asked for town permission to put the private water sewer lines in the town road and run them back to the connection, which is near the rail trail parking. There's a manhole yeah, yeah. in Maury Road and there's a water line that comes down there. So they're gonna do connections in the road. Mark French, when I first said this to him, he's like, I don't like anything in my road except for town stuff. You know, that just the upper level, you know, do not mess with my road because then I have somebody else messing with my road. Maintenance wise, failure, brakes and all that stuff. So I didn't, really didn't know how to deal with that in the in the sense of what could we deny it could we deny the request for utilities basically and that was kind of hanging for a little bit because I would, didn't quite know what to do with that information at the same time the a project in quiet lane came up which is a house on the new public trail so public trails don't provide access to properties Legally, it's supposed to be a town highway. You're supposed to have access to a town highway. When the select board voted to turn Webster Road Class 4 to a public trail, the rules sort of changed for that property. Now they have a need to access a public trail, which typically is for walking and biking and other things, and not for vehicles, and get a permission to use that trail for vehicle use, which is a it's all rolled into the 11 process either way, all these things. So we said, and then you had a general comment about class four roads. This is the town attorney, because all the stuff balled up together. Like this is way beyond my experience that we don't have all these things coming in. And he said, anybody using class four roads, this is railroad drive, Diggins road, a couple other ones that are just like little short class four roads should have a um, power plant, a, a license, power plant road, should have a license and agreement with the town to deal with all the variables in there, which is really an expanded 1111 permit. If you do work in our road right away, you will have insurance. <laughs> if you damage a town culvert, you'll repair it. If you do, you know, all those kind of things. And it's about three or four pages long. Mm -hmm. Right now, we've been issuing 1111 permits with two or three little bullets, you know, call a highway foreman when you start digging so he can go meet with you and work it out. That's kind of the extent of our current 1111 permit. This is a different document where the landowner and the select board sign a license agreement or use agreement and get it recorded in the land records, which protects the taxpayers from these private uses of public roads. So we, the taxpayers don't pay for Definitely. all those things. Right. Sort of like we just talked about with you know, other issues where, you know, if you're going to go outside and have an agreement with a landowner that they're going to waive all liability, what's that release I'm going to see from Mr. Patch? Mm -hmm. I release you? Or is it going to be some sort of a legal document that means something? Yeah, it's clear. Right. And this is the same thing with these licenses. So this is all, this is all new. This mm -hmm. is not something the town has dealt with before. We've ignored mm -hmm. it, basically, on Diggins Road. Um, we have three landowners up there that are always mucking around with that class four road, including winter plowing. Yeah. Uh, they will add gravel from time to time and yeah. things are pretty okay. The highway went up there this early, late last fall and made some other upgrades to mm -hmm. it and the road's in pretty good shape. I haven't seen it after the winter this year, but I do want to get up there. Good shape. It's in good shape now. So, you know, is that all we really need? And this is the same thing. The town attorney's recommending something that's a little bit different than we ever did before but it's always in the best interest of having everything work out better sure. either for all the parties or limit liability and if you're willing to take some risk then we don't need the license agreements but it's the board taking that risk for the taxpayer 
years and not like putting that in place. So I don't know where to go from here. The, the, the license agreements are holding up projects. Um, one of them is being held up specifically, um, which is the Maury Road one. They need the 1111 to move forward with their project and know that they can have water and sewer versus trying to get on site water and sewer. So they've taken the, hopefully, the most cost effective path for them. Um, but the license itself has some additional costs. Like maybe they want their attorney to review the license agreement. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, where do you want to go with this? It's almost like should, the, should you ignore it or should you get into it? If you get into it, then I would probably have a much more better understanding than I do now about the license agreement and what the impact is on the landowner. Because we're asking them to do too much. I think it's mostly a waiver agreement, just like Michael was saying, but it's three pages long. It's like I, the landowner is responsible for yeah. A, B, C, D, F, G, not the town taxpayers. And I think that's... Michael's not going to come up with something like that. It probably doesn't need to be as detailed because it's not a permanent thing like a water and sewer line or a driveway or some of those other things that are critical to the house. As, you know, some, Phil is a different category. Somebody must have that kind of waiver. It's in place in other towns so yeah. as liability yeah. so costs. We don't have to invent it. No, it's, it's, it's yeah. just here. You know, this is, this 27 is, page, right. Yeah, this is what it looks like. You know, it's a legal document and there's there's a license agreement title, and it says we give you the right to instruct in our, and you're going to pay all the bills. Basically, is what this says, but it's all legal and multi-page. Well, and that gets attached. That, that gets attached to the 1111 permit. It all gets recorded on land records, and it's all done. They get the right to do it. They agree to all the, the liability and, and costs. It should it happen related to their in, their own personal stuff, their private stuff. Mark's not on there anymore. I'm going to ask him about, uh, just get his insight, you know, if they're going to be tearing up the road, I want to hear what he had to, had to say about that, too. So well, the other, you said you the, the other thing is, in the right-of-way, I don't know if you remember, the brownfield work down by the trail. Yeah. 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 So the, the trailhead parking lot was tested for brownfield up to the travel lane of Maury Road. So it could so, be potential. So they're putting a water line on in the ditch on the north side of Maury Road, which is technically in a brownfield area, which is regulated by the state of Vermont now. So do do we allow that to happen as sort of our brownfield because we did the testing? Uh, not if it's in the right of way. It's in, well, this is, the, it's 500 feet in the right of way is what they want to use. They want to use the water line, put the sewer down the middle of the road and put the water line in the ditch line, which is also part of a brownfield. So the whole hot, the, the simple house project, right? Uh, yeah. So we have two issues. We have the brownfield in, infringement, if you will, the water line. Plus we have this new concept from the town attorney, which maybe he's better to have present to you all if you want to make this part of your policy, that if somebody's putting infrastructure, utilities, in the town right away, they have to sign this with their 11 line. But do you, you know, do you want more information from him on that? Because that's all a legal thing. And then if somebody the concept is, the concept is simple, but it's... You so this is somebody's building a new house, obviously. There's two new houses that both have use of public right away for private use. Is what's happening, and we have all typically we, and this must, it must have something to do with the overall cost of everything. But you have most of the subdivisions are either fronting on a private road or they're fronting on a town road, and a lot of the remaining lots are difficult. They have these little pieces that just spin off into these no, no nowhere land where. If they're trying to save some money by running private water and sewer lines down a public road, but does the public want to take that on? And we, we definitely do. We, we'll right. take a 40 or 50 foot stretch. I mean, obviously, we want the tax revenue. I mean, we, we yeah, we'll mean, but at the same time, I don't think they're, they're, in my opinion, that some of this needs to be watched or overseen because I can tell you if I dig in your road and I tell you I'll put it back the way it is, I'm going to use the material that's there. Well, there should be a spec to that, you know, saying, okay, we're going to have X amount of cobble. Or, the, or they'll put some stone up against the right. water line exactly. and then all of a sudden that rubs through and you get water leaks forever and they're always in the road repairing the road. So right. there's, there's liability. The other option on Maury Road in particular is to discontinue that road totally and just leave it to the village and these two houses. And then we're out of it and it's all private and they can do whatever they want. 
Now that's that's my state hat on. The state tells us that all the time. You want to do all that work to that road, then you can have it, and we'll get rid of it. That's so, right. It's all yours. But that is an that is an option when things get really complicated. Is just say, okay, we'll have a discontinuance hearing, and the, you guys can share it with the village, and we're out of here. Do whatever you want. Just I think I think discontinue. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, if people how really, many how many people are on that road? One. Well, there's one now, and then there's this proposed new family. Yeah, but, but there's only one that we service, essentially. So we would only but you, need. But you know what's going to happen down the road ten years from now? We're going to tap into it, add on to it. I just not, the Bailey's own most of the floodplain down the road. <laughs> and the village owns the whole south side of Mori Road. Right. So there's not a lot of land, open land left. It's just this little strip of. And the like I said, the railroad comes close to Mori Road, it's just an opening where they have a potential for one house lot, and then it narrows up again with the rail trail. So, anyway. Who's doing this? Uh, Wallace. Bobby. Uh, granddad used to live out there, or have a big trailer truck, something. Park it on this lot, and now the lot's being a granddaughter or daughter? I'm not sure. Daughter. Daughter's trying to put a house up there. So they want to come right down the road. Yeah, from the basically from that corner all the way back to the little cut through road by that rail train. Yeah. But there's no spec. So yeah, no, there's no, no spec on the water. There's no, no way, way they can. For those there's shit. no way they can just go across it without coming down it. The no. water and sewer. The village yeah. told them the closest part is back towards that little crossroad by the rail trail parking lot. That's as close as the water and sewer line mains are. So they had to come come to it. Come back to that. So, you know, it's a, and 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 and, um, I like getting out of there. and they can't like put a sewer them. system on the lot there, the, their their lot. Uh, they didn't answer that yet. They they've well, always been talking to the village about extending public water and yeah. sewer. It's probably a good investment in their land to have public water and sewer. Oh but, yeah. But I don't. I didn't get into the options of whether they had. That's the, the cost of doing your own water and sewer. Yeah, so. I mean it's. They'd have to come right down the road. Well, I think, see, if, if... I don't think we, Mark would mind giving the road up. If, if we up. give up that road, then we're out of it. Yeah, but they ain't going to give that road up. That's been in the town for ever since I was a kid. <laughs> That's your decision, though. It's not their decision. Yeah. 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 And but, how many houses down there? Well, it's, one. It's, all, it's there's a long, one, house, there's one house down there. It's a long road with lots of knotweed, and Mark doesn't really need to be down in there. I'd like to bring Bobby in and talk to Bobby and see how he... Because... I know he ain't going to throw that up. There's no way he's going to throw that up. Who's throwing it up? The landowner? Yeah. yeah. Well, they will, they'll, they're not going to, they'll have a right-of-way back to Depot Street. They don't lose right-of-way. They get a private right-of-way back to Depot Street. They're not losing anything. They're just losing the plow truck for their driveway. Yeah. Then, uh, <laughs> uh, well, nobody likes that, but it's, it might be better. It might be, <laughs> Better That'd be better for project. the town, right? I mean, the other option is you get, I I really wouldn't. I'd want somebody to sign those legal documents so that they're because if you think 15 years out and they sell that and then the new person does something and it's a well, it's not my cost. I didn't know it. Like, no, here you need to understand this no, is they, your cost. And they've only drawn two lines on the map. They haven't drawn the spec of how they're going to install these things yet, which is all another engineering thing that they're avoiding. Well, that road isn't that wide. How far does how how wide the sewer and water have to be apart from each other? Ten. I think they're proposing ten feet. I think is what they're proposing. Well, one's going to be on one side, then yeah. One's, one's in the ditch line. The water line's in the ditch. Yeah, yeah water line's in the ditch. Right. Which is a brownfield. I mean, no ledge in there. You know, to... oh, yeah, they can get they can get approvals, but just something they, they didn't consider yet. Until I called him last week and said, I've got a map here with A&R's brownfield sketch running right over your water line. So, I don't know. It's not easy. None of this stuff is easy. I mean, you want to be able to help people right. get their project done. Maybe they have. Maybe there's an alternative plan that nobody's thought of. If you sign the license agreement, I probably would spend more time on it just to understand what it means. I'm just, it's new to us, you know, but it's not an impossible document. It's, I read it once, it seems pretty 
you're responsible for any damage and you have to repair stuff. Yeah. And I think we're going to, we would have a lien yeah. on their property potentially as a way to cover the cost so we're not chasing them all the time. If they don't do it within, you know, the road's damaged or something and they oh, don't I do it within. Me. If he says he, he, he do it. They no, we're doing it for everybody down the road that yeah. buys yeah. down there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's what, yeah. That's what Susan was saying. It's not just the current people, it's yeah. everybody else. It's what happens and when but they sell something in the future. But they're not going to have that many down there. Who knows? <laughs> no, I, I, I know there's nothing down there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm surprised there's one. But. Well, he's got that across the road from where his house is. He's got that. Yeah. I think he owns that. And then Harold Bailey owns down below that. And the village owns the rest. And the village, the village owns, owns the okay. rest. Okay. And his son owns just past him. Huh? And his son's just past him. I think there's two houses at the end that are the same property, maybe. There's Bobby and his yeah, Bobby and then Bobby Jr. Yeah. Oh, he built out there too? Well, I think they're right next to each other at the end of the road. Yeah, okay. I was going to say they're too, right. Yeah. I don't, I'm not even going to have to set a lot. But I'd like to be able to talk to him and see what he wants to do. Do you want to do that and then report back to us and hear? Or do you want him here to talk to? Or? Why? Because they're, they're probably wanting to move forward with whatever the world is, right? But it seems to me whatever he wants to do, I I think it, that it needs to sign this kind of a contract. I don't, I mean, for me, that's not, a, I don't care if he wants to do that or right. not, but right. protecting the town and taxpayers out in the future, we need to have that. Again, because you just think, I think of all these a variety of things we've heard somebody sells, well, I didn't know I had to do that. Yeah, well, let's do it. Yeah. And then that way you know, and, and just and talk to them and say, here's what it is, and yeah. here's what you need to sign, and it's not. So you, you want know. to go with that evidence? What's that? To you sign want to talk the waiver? To first, just to or talk to them first? No, just go ahead and I know you'll do the waiver. Right yeah. Mm -hmm. So the waiver, we need a... Lauren Wallace, I was checking the name. <laughs> Lauren, I don't know who anybody knows Lauren. Lauren's the one I've been dealing with permitting. She, I think she wants to build the house. Relationship is to Bobby or whatever. But. Does we need a motion for that or anything? Um, no, eventually, when there's a lot of blanks in here, so no, it, be. it has to be filled out, and eventually, you'll have a you could have a motion to allow Brian to sign the license agreements for use of public highway right of ways, and then when we do yeah, the other one, you, you, it, right? you know, the chair is always authorized to sign these right. things. And then the 1111's issued and they all get smushed yep. together in the land records. So if you can have a motion to sign the license agreements for use okay. of the public right away, then I move I move that we give the chair the authority to sign the license. Second. Ooh, that's what he's going to write. All in favor, signify so by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstaining? I didn't hear Josh. Here. Pens all over the I didn't hear Josh. Yeah. She'll get there. <laughs> okay. Anything else? No, we're not going to do the. No, they got the town orders here. They're all signed. Yep, yeah, all. Town orders are there. I the signed order. every line. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> those are all the library books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you guys, those the orders need to come back up because Brian needs to sign them. So this yeah. still needs to be signed by. Yeah. 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 I got, I got the others coming back this way. Oh, here comes contracts. Yeah, I've already signed that one. I signed a lot of those already. Oh, okay, yeah. Just double check, so yeah, I don't have to do an emergency sign. While we're sitting here, might as well do that stuff. Right. I'm just checking those out. <clears throat> just, just for my own education, how did the Lamont County Sheriff's Department get that kind of, like, town funding? Where did, where did that start? That, that seems like a lot of money. It is. Um, it's what we paid and paying for, for services for years. It's sort of yeah, here's, here's the cost. Of dispatching. There been, well, there are two separate ones. There's the dispatching, but then, and then there's, there's the control. Then yeah, there's the control, control seems like a lot. It's um, if you sit down and see his costs, we aren't yeah, even the towns don't even cover his costs. No, the sheriff so totally I'm subsidizes like, yeah. the towns. Yeah, yeah, I read it all. Right, yeah. We're all in real trouble, and there's been there's been a group that has worked on this for 
ever trying to come up with dealing with sustainability issues for the for the sheriff from law enforcement. Okay. I mean, I certainly don't um, want to try yeah. to grow in Kenan, but no. by kicking down, just looking at the cost and saying, holy cow, yeah. half a yeah. million bucks. Yeah, yeah. That's well, a lot of money for Yeah, and, and, and that, um, that's almost our tiring department. Yeah. Budget. Yeah, if you look at, at what towns, what, what taxpayers pay for, you're covering for law enforcement, roads, and schools. You know, and, 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 the, and the, the long. The law enforcement and the roads are just a little blip. <laughs> Eaton, they went with the state, right? Yeah. Eaton did. Yeah, and they've been having serious conversations with the sheriff's department. They have, they, they, and they go with the state, so they, they, they get an allowance, that's all they do. Right? Eaton goes with X amount of money, so it gives them a certain allowance of patrol. Eight hours a week, I think, or something like that. Because they found with well, most of the Wolcott's small towns the dealing point. with no Wolcott. Wolcott's sheriff, actually. Yeah, it's sheriff. Yeah. Elmore went. They went with Roger. Yes, they get ready to roll in and go with Roger because they're finding folks with the state police are finding how little service they have. Mm -hmm. and of course, how far away anybody but is. Wolcott's part time, right? Wolcott's sheriff. So many hours. Sheriff. Sure. Well, but but it's yeah, so that's what your budget is, but it's yeah. it's pretty so yeah. many hours a week or so. Yeah. We've had Rogers three now four years ago committed to just a three percent a year increase. Um and, and, so he and loses again, so many police that. officers. He gets them all started, he puts them through the Well and what and what happened is is it's the retirement thing. That we don't. This is they go to Warsaw, they go to Star yeah. or somewhere like that to get their retirement. They get the 20 year retirement. 20 year. Retired 20 years. And Roger our, can't afford it. Uh, well, he, he, yeah, no, nobody can probably do that. And of course, Hardwick's department went south and they wanted Roger, and Roger was just a, a camp. You know, I don't have the capacity to do the hiring to, to pick it up. And one of the things this group has talked about is sometime do we figure out how to do a more regional policing thing. Like you got Morris down that has its own big police department. Of course, Stowe has its big police department. And you, and you look at their budgets and you go, right, okay. So I talked to... Uh Karen Stackpole, and uh, um, you mentioned about Ron uh, um, is going to retire at some point, and uh, uh, we got in the discussion about um, uh, hiring somebody else, what, what the process is to uh, hire somebody else, and um, we talked about Ron's uh, contract, and Ron mentioned he's got it every six months, it's signed, and uh, um, that type of thing. There's a. How does the um, stipend, or is it, what is it? It's for two months. Uh, oh, there's a th if the select board uh, terminates the contract before that six month roll rollover. Yeah. Then there's a three month um, balloon payment, or what do they call it? Shoot. <laughs> three, three or three or two. Two or three months. I yeah. Care. It's small. Yeah. It was just something added there that yeah. we put in there. So it's, uh, I think it's only if you terminate. I don't, I, I think I, there's probably some for cause and all that other stuff that we're sure. doing. But that I wouldn't get it. But if it's just, oh, we're done with you, we're going to move on, <laughs> then there's a payment of some lump sum. So out of the conversation that um, um, Karen mentioned that there's a, uh, uh, some places have been over a year trying to find a person to fill a position. And so if Ron decides he goes to Florida one more time and he says, 
you know, I know he won't do that, but, but so I gotta go out here. The wife might do that, but the I wife don't know. Know. <laughs> well, well, look over there. <laughs> see, see, even, it was a good call. Up, I can see her smiling. She hasn't even turned her head around yet. <laughs> her cheekbones, you see them rising. She, she's assisting with training all day today, so give her some Be nice. Thanks. Okay, yeah. some thanks to that. And yeah, she's very. Jennifer and her got along really well today. Oh, oh good. Good. good, good, good. Some good stuff done. And so. I just want to make everybody aware that we need to plan far enough in, in advance to uh, uh, when it does come that time that Ron decides that he wants to uh, retire and stuff like that because uh, do you think you would give a year notice or is that unreasonable well, or rational? But I know other things well, could we, happen we, too. We, the family, have been trying to figure that out. I think that's good that she's sitting with him. She's, she's <laughs> right. running an ear right. to it. This is, this is well, working out just fine. There's, there's, just pray we're over here. No, but there's serious, like, yeah. serious life changes that happen, right? Yeah. So yeah. our last teenager graduates from high school in two weeks mm -hmm. from MMU. Every, all five of them are going to make their own path. Two of them are at UVM, one might go to Norwich, another one's traveling around the country. Another one's probably going to stay home with mother and, and go to school. So they're, they're over here now. They used to be like right there. So now we're, we're looking at other options for ourselves, including by you know going on 33 years in local government. So that's how that conversation all came to a head, plus the Florida piece where she's got a bag half packed all the time. <laughs> not the summer. Yeah. Yeah, not in the summer. Just the no, winter, right? We're, we have to do the summer <laughs> thing somewhere. So, because, not just because of the market stuff, but because I like to work with the Hyde Park resident. There's no reason for me to leave that's pushing me out necessarily. Right. Right. Things are running good. We got a lot of we have 13 grant projects that keep me really busy. We got progress being made. And a lot of stuff that I've been working on for 10 years is finally getting some. You know, I want to work with Rec to make sure they're turned around. Sure. And those things keep my brain moving. And the 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 piece that's pushing, if there's any piece is the commute, is the in-office time. That's, that's creating a little bit of rub. And not, not in a good or bad way, in, in the sense that we had a letter that said four days, nine to four was where I started, and then the couple sentences after that said that I could modify that based on the needs of the office or something, kind of loosey-goosey. This board met last, uh, at the end of COVID and said, we want you in the office four days. There is no way I can be in the office four days. I've tried it, and it's not. It just doesn't work for my focus time. It doesn't. I'm, I'm not needed up there. I sat there all day today, and I was. I was good that I was here because I knew I needed to be here because we had that lightning strike, which we're still picking up the pieces from as late as 4:30 today, trying to get this thing working. So I had texts all for the last week in and out of this place, and I needed to be. Here. Lacking that, almost everything that I do is moved up to the cloud. I can log in from anywhere, get into NIMRIC, get into zoning permits. I physically, and people are used to texting me their zoning application, working with other things. So the transition, if there's going to be transition, I see working very well, almost like it was during COVID for two years. And having time here when I need to be here for meetings and for emergencies and things. but having flexibility to work on that, not to mention gas prices, of course, mm -hmm. but right. having a transition plan that includes that piece of trying to keep up with the workload as long as you can, you know, because there's going to be some transitional things like Jennifer that need, you know, be here the office or the files. Eventually she's going to take off and she's got one or two days already into remote work and she's got the same access as I do now. She wants to be here three or four days a week, She's like Tuesday to Friday is going to be her general schedule. So there will be a presence here for that purpose. Fine. Um, the transition to the 24 hours is really the, the bigger question. And under the VMERS program, there has to be a 30 day break in service to start drawing the benefits. So with Hyde Park, unless you were to double my pay, it doesn't make any sense to work 25 hours and continue contributing to retirement because the retirement benefit doesn't change unless you get a huge increase in your salary. Mm -hmm. So every day that I stay at 40 
hours or 25 hours and not able to draw. I'm sort of losing money. I'm not gaining money, but I'm not losing money. So I was always thinking about in steps. Where, where do we go from here? We know there's uh, a lot of projects. We talked about breaking up the job before. We've tried to advertise for the minute taker person to do agendas and minutes. There's no way with 30 years I should be doing minutes and agendas, but I'm doing it. So we, and we can't find anybody to do it, so we have to meet our open meeting law stuff. And I don't know how to crack that. It's still posted on the web if you looked on it, the uh, agenda. I don't know how to I don't know how to how to help the town do that. I don't want to spend twenty five dollars an hour to have somebody do agendas either. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll do it at thirty seven or thirty eight. <laughs> that still doesn't make sense. You're talking about what Matt was talking about. You know, what, what do you do? I don't know. What do you, you have guys running double trucks. <laughs> you, you have two trucks sitting there, one driver. You know, so I hear what Karen's saying, but I, I think conversations like this help move things along because if something's not working right, we can fix it. But I also need to be more forward with you and say, look, you know, I'll, I can do time that's needed, but being structured to nine to three on five days a week is that's I'm so out of that you know not only because of 33 years but because there's all their alternatives that work fine for people i haven't heard any complaints other than people maybe looking to complain you know those <laughs> and that's very far and few between i think service has been good and i think that can continue even if hours reduce so as jennifer increases her capacity yeah. Yeah. i'm hopefully going to get back to a 40. <laughs> That's, yeah. my goal. Well, That's my initial goal is to get back to 40 yeah. with Jennifer doing and then talk to you about what, uh, what other piece what can be need? spun off to get to right. the 24 and then right. always be available for special projects and grants and other things that I can do from anywhere so that if I do go to Florida, it doesn't matter because I'm doing those things that we've already agreed can work fine. There's going to be a need for people here though. And that's the that's the piece I want to make sure that you have access to. Yeah. Whether that's an expanded Jennifer, an expanded Krista, where they're expected to come in and help the board, like who would, who's going to put this meeting together? Yeah. Right. There's probably three hours before every meeting, making sure the meeting can happen. You know, for making sure that audio is working. So that's why I said I actually said something out loud tonight when Katie said the audio was good, because it's good to hear that because it's a little bit of work to get that together. And I, I don't know how to fill those pieces. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, have, all over the place. I've asked public have access hour. TV people. There's four, they've got three or four now. They used to have five. Now they're down to three or four. Same old story. Can we pay you to come for that half hour before a meeting to meet with the chair of the board to run through audio and video and get the meeting running in case I'm not here? They can't do it. Hmm. So I, I want to solve those problems too, plus keep all the projects going. But a lot of times, if everything's running fine, the internet's working fine, lightning didn't hit the building, which we're still running a bill on, that's not going to be nice. My old insurance claim would be LCT for that one. $1,000 deductible, just filling the holes if anybody had known that. And how do, you, how do you make it all happen? I think it's conversations like this, making sure everybody, and getting, there's got to be another person somehow that can do that. Right. It's a community development position that actually goes to meetings and boards and does minutes i don't know who, you know there's people out there that you can hire out of school that will be just fine helping the committees and boards trouble is everybody gets out of school they're heading out of this out of state yeah. yeah yeah a lot of people are going into business by themselves so you don't have the labor pool that just wants a job anymore they want to work for themselves and then you get everybody resigning and retiring and then you're, you're left with I thought about putting it back on the on the real board members. It used to be board members would appoint Roland as the clerk, and yeah. they would do the right. agenda with the clerk and do the minutes by scrawling in an old book. Mm -hmm. Who's there, what the vote was, and you close the book until the next meeting. <laughs> you know, it's almost like you have to go retro, right. but people want that stuff posted, as we found out with right. a couple of citizens. Mm -hmm. I got a little behind on agenda by a couple of days. Call Brian. Where's your agenda? Holy crap. People do pay attention to that stuff. And yeah. Well, they, they do, and it's interesting, the stuff that's, that's online, but it's, you know, and, and again, when you, when, I would think town clerk's jobs have got to be changing tremendously, too, because so much of this stuff now, you know, realtors, people know, very 
few people need to come into an office anymore. You know, I mean, it's all it's all online. So all that commuting time, all that everything time, it just doesn't exist. It's just all you know. You get all your records. You're doing everything. You're doing everything online. There's correction to do. <laughs> Push your button. Don't do that. Don't hit me. Put that knife away. Shank. Um, so to answer, yeah. your, to answer your question, the original question, yeah. I think it's better to talk to, I found anyway, just having that last discussion. It sort of put, focus, it helps you focus. Sure. Because we've been nibbling around this for over a year. Well, maybe it's, it's now, just now sort of come up with a plan and say, here's well, our oh, that's right. But, well, and, and here's what the jobs are, and here's what we need to do so you can come up with. And, and part of it, I, I mean, you know, we'd hoped, and the first one didn't, and, ho and hopefully Jennifer works. Okay, so because once that position is solid, that, that, that makes a big difference. Okay, that you know, it's starting, starting to now yeah. after a so yeah. of the boys yeah. and, yeah. the and, and that takes a you know, and and then I, again yeah. with the way the town clerk's job is changing, that is there is there more time there from her staff person to part time to pick up, or here's Here's the other job that we need. Can you create a nice? Is it you know? Is it a part-time job for somebody that again maybe they it isn't somebody right Christa out of college. Krista has already mentioned to me that she would take on more, or just pay her accordingly, and uh, you can't expect any more than yeah, that. You yeah, know, as long as she gets exactly. paid, you know, uh, right. so. and she's compensated properly. Uh, they also talked about um, the public works. I guess. Uh, uh, a lot of towns are stealing other people because they, they, they yeah right so they they uh, we, they get them all trained. Our, our crew has been called. Yeah, so and they get them all trained, and then yeah. they uh, they steal. Them. Yeah. So it's uh, um, and then led to the question about what's a comparable wage for hiring somebody on. It depends on their experience and stuff like that. Uh, Karen uh, said that probably talk to uh, League of Cities and Towns and. They could probably give us a, a mean or an average of, of what uh, uh, being paid so that we're comparable with the, uh, in the labor market for, for the position. And uh, um, so let's see what else she had. Uh, and then uh, somebody that's almost an expert in, uh, in dealing with contracts. You want somebody that uh, for... Uh, uh, how we, if you've got a union, you want to be able to make sure you're making the right choices all the time so that you don't go into uh, grievances all the time, that type of thing. That was one big one that she's run into in the past and, uh, and not having any violations, that type of thing. Um, let's see, yeah, and the league has a list of, and then uh, what else? Uh, Talking about, like I said, like uh, liability and stuff like that, and that's what spurred the thing about the the truck and stuff with uh, uh, people taking it home type of thing. Um, and yeah, we we talked about Ron's contract, as Ron mentioned, it's every or I said every six months, and uh, and what was in it type of thing. Um, <sighs> If we want the same sort of uh, conditions for the next person's hired, she can work on that contract, she can develop yeah. it or whatever, but yeah. it's going to stem for what there is a void here that needs to be feel, filled. I mean, um, and let's see, basically, yeah, that's, that's everything. Yeah, I think you'll get, if it all works out the right way, and this is my little vision for the Hyde Park okay. you know, next 20 years when all of us are gone, is that the finance office will have a very dis defined set of duties and they'll do them very well and there'll be a backup plan to that. Yeah. That's one goal that Brian has been asking for for a while. You'll also have a better definition of what you're, I think Chastity asked me at the last meeting, what were the main categories and there's like four of them. How to how to solve that? I, there's other towns that have people that 
maybe have never been in Hyde Park, haven't been asked to come to meetings and take those minutes. And we just need to keep asking to find somebody that's really dedicated to open meeting law and they want to do the agenda and they want to do the minutes. And we pay them 20 bucks an hour to, to do that. We had one offer for $40 an hour for a contracted person, but they wouldn't come here. They would do it off the Zoom and they produce minutes. So that's what gives you one example of what contracted people or people that would right. just you know, prefer to do it. So that's too costly to me. You know what I mean? There's got to be somebody that would enjoy coming to meetings and doing stuff, but they just aren't happening. And then the whole community development planning and zoning piece. So you get your select board and contracts and let's call that grants too, but then you have this other piece, which is the softer stuff, planning, zoning, community development, Guy and Valley Hall, community circle, um, recreation, those kind of things that really need support to keep your volunteers interested so they don't get bogged down in crap, basically. You know, we, we deal with that with, <laughs> you know, contracts for people that don't have workers' comp and all that. We have to check those boxes, but if you don't have somebody that can sort of work, Brock, you can call me today. Maybe, yeah. Um, that can work with, within the office and get those things done, then it falls to the volunteers and pretty soon you have burnout on volunteers that really want to do good things. The, yep. Like a, play, <laughs> like a playground, fun, more fun stuff, right? Yeah. So, we're, so you know, we're working with Matt and the rec committee on one of their contractors to try to get them their paperwork in line, but it's me and Jennifer and Matt making a, you know, encouraging call, phone call. Yeah. Um, did, he yeah. actually, did he figure it out? Yeah, he, well, he didn't finish what he was supposed to do yet, but he said he would. So that's what I'll, I can work on that piece and really kind of define the, the near-term place that Hyde Park should be at. And I think the overall view of that, and this is where you're going to get pushback from a Dave Gagne and other people. Not, not, Dave is the only one that's ever said anything directly. We don't need more people. It's been running fine for 30 years. 30 years ago, you didn't have 13 open grants. 30 years ago, you didn't have MRGP. 30 years ago, you didn't have you know, human resources telling you that you had to watch out for 18 hour people before you give them benefits. You know, those kind of things. So every one of those things that the state is always layering on us, and private business does do the same thing. If you don't respond to it, you're running risk to the taxpayers. And if you're really running a bad show, you don't take advantage of the other side, which is the grants, efficiencies, and things like that. So you really, I can do that based on my 11 years and kind of put those into more focus, sort of follow up with what Chastity asked at the last meeting. And then time that with a transition plan on top of that. Because if you advertise today for a town administrator that does what I do, and you pay them 60,000 starter rate or whatever, I just, I, I think you'll go, maybe go through three or four before you might find somebody, but it's really hard to find somebody to come in and do all that well, unless you have plenty of time built into that learning curve. And that's what I was kind of getting at, was uh, um, make sure that that overlap happens, that type of thing. You're well, totally, I'm totally into just making things good. I mean, yeah. there's, no, yeah. there's no immediacy other than trying to, move through this. I guess that's the easiest challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Melanie has anything to say. She, she, she was just getting ready to throw something at you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going down, you I was going down like this, I didn't get hit. I, I, I just don't want to hear about the car. I'd rather hear it now. <laughs> I don't know. I think, um, like you said, the, the, the retirement piece, once you're over the 30 years, every dollar that goes into retirement it takes 28 years to get it back out dollar for dollar. So financially, it makes some sense for him to keep working in a position that that is invested in the system because it just doesn't work. And that's sort of my, that's my piece of that. Um, I think that he's worked a lot um, being a CPA in the accounting world. Like, working 80 hours a week is what I do. That's never what he used to do, and when I'm still working at 1 a.m. and he's still working at 1 a.m. and I'm waving the white flag at 11.30 saying I can't go any further and he's still sitting there. Like, he's been working a lot and I haven't seen that from him in the last, you know, 15 years. So, there's definitely a lot of work and a lot of projects going on and it's it's hard for us to be in Florida at 8 o'clock at night and sheriff's calling, you know, and 
you know, we're leaving him behind as he goes to deal with whatever's going on with whatever dog or whatever person's in a house okay. that's unsuitable or all of that stuff. So I think that um, this job, and I blame him for some of, some of these like grants, like stop with all this community development stuff, like it's all true. this more it's fuzzy fun. extra <laughs> Diane Valley Falls and the community circles and the trying to keep historical societies and the not weed. I'm like stop. It, it came <laughs> up when it came up when you were gone that uh, when you're gone you should be doing vacation stuff, I not know. not doing the, the work stuff. And if there's some way of developing something that uh, can alleviate that, that's what well, I believe the yeah, well, word wants. I mean, we, I have a lot invested in Jennifer because Jennifer's going to do two things. One, she'll be a good, solid finance person with a little bit of the admin coming in, which will relieve a lot of the high-pressure stuff of meeting payroll, meeting the accounts payable, chasing invoices. If she wants to do a little bit more, then that's always a possibility. But we may identify that there's cer certain things within the office that are um, better better focused on one job. So when you have, I call myself a generalist, you know, because I can jump from dog catcher to playgrounds to you know GPS systems and whatever. But you'll get if you can if we can, if we can focus on a job that yeah. is allows that person to focus on the job and get into it, you'll get more efficiencies out of that because they'll, they'll know it better. Right. Yeah. And they'll, have, they'll bring more recommendations to you. Well, and you'll always like the job jumping around because that's, that's who you are. That's what he likes to do, a little bit of everything. Uh, yeah, I, never, I can never predict my day. I'll come in yeah. with a good idea for the first hour and then it just takes over. So, and, and that is primarily driven by keeping people moving. I don't like getting a request and then having two or two days go by. It's like, okay, how can I answer this person in the next half hour? Which is a really good benefit. And I don't want to lose that either in the transmission, you know, trans, trans, transition, because it, people are used to that. And I think it's the fairest thing to taxpayers is not leave them hanging. If they have a simple question, text them right back. That's what I did with, I didn't know where he lived or anything, but he's like, I want to deliver some dirt to Jer Jericho you know, or Johnson. And I just, texted him back the answer because that was a two second response. I didn't have a way to answer him any other way than just here. <laughs> I cannot help you. Maybe you want to go to the select board meeting. Mm -hmm. But his response, he was, I'm not happy, but I'm coming. <laughs> I said, great, because that wasn't going to change over the next week. <laughs> you were still going to be unhappy and you were still coming. <laughs> so. But anyway, that, that I don't want to lose in anything that we do. So I want to get good people to work with the boards. And that's sometimes really hard to do these days. And writing it down and getting in front of you what that looks like and coming up with a transition plan that um, is workable is, is the goal. Yeah. She raised it. Oh. <laughs> Did you have anything else to add? No, I just think that my, my dad have to know that he really enjoys his job and that's why he goes that and does the extra mile as, as we're all out having dinner while he's in a meeting and things like that and so I think there's some truth to that um, as much as I go whatever it's time for you to retire it's time for you to move on he really does genuinely want to leave it in a better place and he wants to still be able to shape it as he makes his way out but I think you have some serious challenges in the hiring front because like at UVM, like it's so hard to find people to work at UVM. And I mean, we have amazing benefits. We have 10% retirement matches. We have amazing health benefits that like, that the platinum plan that you guys offer people is great, but they're serious out of pocket expenses. It's not what it used to be. You know, the, the types of plans that um, people who work in municipal government were used to, they didn't have 10% co-insurances on the most, you know, platinum of plans. And so your health benefits aren't as good as, you know, we have in the UVM realm and free tuition for kids. And it used to be so hard to get a job there. And we're getting nobody that wants to work. And so I think that the labor market has really, really changed in the last oh, couple of years. And so yeah. it, and it's going to be a challenge, just like Karen said. So I think you have to just try to match 
map that out as best you can, but just the, the added dog catcher things, the minute taker things, like you can't find anybody to do yeah. anything, and I don't know how to peel those layers off um, without paying a lot of money for it. So I, I don't know what you're going to do, but um, I, I want to whisk him off to Florida whenever I want to whisk him off to Florida. <laughs> so. Oh, she didn't say that you have a to keep people, she's been approved for 100% remote. So that that used to be a COVID thing. Now it's a perk. Yeah. Yep. Perk, yeah. Yep. That's so that's happening in lots of places. Yeah. And I, I don't think it has to be a negative thing. Like, if somebody says this doesn't feel right, I think there's an answer for that stuff. You know, I've got people that I never thought in the world would, would email me a scanned image of a, of a permit or a document. And most people are pretty capable either to text something, here, can I take, can I get that to you? Whatever communication we're doing, texting and imaging. Right, two different people right here. He'd probably rather drive down here. I, I don't have time to, I can't get here. I, so I'm like, have this, you know, where he's like, I'll come down and put it in the mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's all sorts of, all different styles. Right. And I think that's the best, that's the, from the, the old silver school. lining of yeah. the COVID stuff is people got used to the, Yes. Available yeah, technologies, yeah. and they could pick, yeah, leave it, push it, take it or leave it. You could always take it or leave it. But a lot of the population in Hyde Park that I do have to deal with on a day to day, no matter what topic it is, we won't. We had a lost dog the other day up on McKinstry Hill. Some shepherd showed up, and I think we saw it with the sheriff called me because the person on the call for 911 dispatch has a posty note in front of her that says, "Call Ron for dogs in Lamoille County." I've gotten calls from, I don't know who put the post-it yeah, note up there, from Moore, but I've been doing Morristown, Johnson, and Hyde Park over the last couple months. i got to go find that post-it note. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to walk right down there <laughs> so ask for a tour The of first it. thing I tell 911 dispatch is there's no dog catchers in Hyde Park, but I'll try to help you. That's how I, that's how I. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> yeah. But the dog was rescued within like six hours from oh, Facebook. Yeah. It was very really quick, kind of. And there's just ways to do 90% of that if you use it. The dog must read it. <laughs> <laughs> I think people turn to it. When their dog leaves, they immediately go to social media looking for information. Yep. Well, if we keep ignoring that Ron's going to retire, he'll just keep showing up. That's oh, right. That's like, oh, <laughs> we almost made it to 9 o'clock. Okay, whoa, look. She's throwing things at you now, man. <laughs> no, but I, I, overall, so, yeah. what are we doing with this? We're going to give it back to him. I, 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 can, I have a great, I've been seeing it. I think we should, it should be easy for us to come up with some for a bill for $4,115 and say, yeah, uh, Mark you did know, already. Don't, don't. Mark did already. He did already? Yes. Okay, good. It's last winter's moving snow plows. Okay, I terrific. Know. And it just and needs I, to come up to just a couple of bucks, yeah. just a couple hey, bucks over there to say, don't worry school. about it. Oh, I've yeah. seen this. Oh, yeah, you did, Mark. Yeah, he didn't, I didn't see it. <laughs> We, okay. we, we, we don't have, we don't that do that in the village, they do it, everything. and they should have contemplated it ahead of time. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's an unitemized invoice for some kind of materials and labor. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know if it's a discussion starter, maybe only. I don't know. No, I, th I think you just come up with a bill and send it back and say, you know. Can I write on that one and send it back? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Make a copy, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We can, start with the, we can start with the rent of the room. No. No, they have that. Yeah, that's uh, a little easy. There's a, there's a, we do invoice, just to give you a quick, something. diesel fuel is taken out by the village crew. We bill them for that. Um, we do not build them for assistance for the snow pile. We did quantify it though over the last two winters. It's about forty-five to five fifty-five hundred dollars worth of town equipment to help them move their piles. And we bought half of their chipper, right? Yep, the chipper is shared, but they are disposing of all the chip on town property, which we don't really have room for. But we are allowing that. Um, if they come over and get some crushed gravel for water main repairs, they come and take whatever they need. There's not, they're not being built for that. Uh, when we call them for assistance on a tree, because the tree's over a power line or it's 50-50 between them, then they'll help us with no charge. So these offsets, if you will, over history have always worked out fine. This is new. This is a new thing. 
So when the two foremen would work together on all the miscellaneous stuff, it kind of, that's why we did the evaluation of the snow pile moving to see how close we were. And so Mark knew what it cost. And you get an idea for the give and take. But this is new. Us invoicing them for that big paving thing was sort of new, but it was justified in the sense that that is damage to our roads that they yeah. paid for. Yeah. So that was not a, that's, that's over here. If this is a result of that, then there's, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. They're two different things. And the village water rate, it went to court, right? Still in court, they're Still hanging court. out there. Yeah. But, but didn't the judge say, there was something either in the newspaper or something that they said something about the judge was kind of leaning towards that they could, that they could set whatever rate they wanted to it's historically, but it wasn't No, they set. The, the thing they were in court was injunctive relief. Uh, the county wanted them to, wanted us to not have to keep paying these higher rates until it was settled. Yeah. And the judge said he didn't think it was doing uh, significant damage to anyone to pay these, but his impression was that the people that the county was correct that they hadn't done their homework, and they have another court date set. Now, how much is it? Did, did they itemize? Is for here? It's how much a month for? Uh for the water and sewer or water? So the select board and the village trustees signed a lease agreement. The trustees gave 15000 to this town to renovate, to make this place work for both yeah. offices. And the village trustees also said that they would not pay any rent, but give us free electric and water. So we don't have any, no charge here for the water? There's, there's no charge, but I'm not sure that's equitable anymore. You know, the fifteen thousand was a makeup thing, but that's probably gone. And now the the lease for commercial space is probably exceeding the water and electric charges. So is there when there's no lease, way out when, when the lease agreement was signed with no way out for the town. It was only left the village could terminate. The town cannot terminate for thirty years. And the hell do people get into those? I don't know. So uh, I, I tried getting us out of it. So anyway, those are that's one of the. There's just a whole bunch of these. Uh, so you mean we couldn't go out and drill a well to the fire department and forget about their water? That's unrelated. That's yeah, unrelated. He's that's talking true. here. He's talking this building versus yeah. 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 the fire department can. And, and because of the increase we've got, we can't. Well, they're saying it's free, but I don't know. I was wondering how to get back. The water. They just, last month they started charging highway garage. For water usage, I didn't even know they had a meter, but I have to. I just have to track that down. Right. So that's new, but I think that's a result of the court case saying you shouldn't be giving free water away, which is generally a, a rule that all water districts follow because user paid, not right. free. So every user well, there must get. be a meter up there somewhere. Yeah, they had a meter reading, but I'm I'm not aware of the bathroom one there. Because they put one in somewhere. So anyway, I just want to make sure they're not taking a meter reading off both these properties because this water is supposed to be free. I was hoping that ARPA would be able to pay for the drilled wells at the fire station. Put one right in the middle of town at, uh, well, they, uh, at the uh, library. There's that spot out back. You can put a well out back here. You'd have to run the line. You'd have to be a little careful there, though. Up in town? No. Well, storage. I mean, we have hydrants all over town, anyways, right? I mean, they pull off the hydrants. Yeah, there's a spot right behind the building. It'd be perfect to get back right in there with a well, a drill, and sink a spot right out there. And there's plenty of room down there to the fire department. You got a swamp out back with the fire department. Okay, we done? Yeah. A motion to adjourn? Sorry. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Hey, Mike Chad. Aye. <laughs> <Hi, Bob. laughs> okay, we're adjourned.